All right. So thanks for joining. And uh, I think online people can hear me, cannot see me. Uh, I want to make this session interactive. My name is Ajay Parihar, and uh, I'll introduce a little bit more about my company and answers. Uh, I have been with the simulation field almost now 21 years. <laughs> and um, currently I am heading the, the technical uh, department uh, at Fute Codes, which is a channel partner for the ANSYS. So as Ru said that I have been doing this. So I have a lot of interest in teaching. And uh, and that's why I have my personal interest to come to the club and interact with you guys. Right, so, so let's make this session interactive and I hope I'll get my mic so that, so that I don't have to speak so loud. Okay, otherwise I think my voice will go away after two days. <laughs> so how many of you, let me just, uh, who knows CFB? Or what it is? Anyone? How many of you are mechanical engineers? Just raise your hand. Chemical. Aerospace. Okay. Yes. So you guys understand what fluid mechanics is, right? Aerospace, chemical, and right? So what is CFB? This, okay, that's good. <laughs> I'll break the ice. So yeah. you the hydrodynamics. So you make simulation for the hydrodynamics of the flow. Okay. Okay, good, good effort. And what do you expect from this coursework? Why you are here? Just training is going on or, or you have some project work or you want to make a career in simulation. That could be also. Uh, and how many of you are just to, I'm trying to understand. Masters, PhD, masters. Okay, PhDs, postdoc. Okay, this is quite a mix. Postdoc. Well, I would actually like to validate my experiment of, uh, the results with the perfect the perfect perfect so this is the profile that we were discussing right yeah. many yeah. people yeah. try to be yeah. ask your pi uh, with, 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 with i'm doing really engineering with professor uh, professor Chitama. so i'm doing the actual experimental and i want to simulate and thank you guys online i think online guys are also saying i am i'm doing phd i'm professor so that's a that's a good thing you know um so you will see some nice car pictures okay so don't get surprised so it's uh um but most of them are fluid mechanics related okay so cfb so since I started, actually, nowadays, if you want to do any simulation, what do you do? You just pick some software and you have a supercomputers, you have a, a hardware, which is very fast. When I was doing my masters, you know, so I used to use 286 and 386 computers. And if I generate a mess, and you will understand what mess is, 12 by 12. So how many, so six by six, 12 by 12. So total number of nodes are like very less, you know, maybe 300 nodes, 400 nodes. And those computers used to take, even for a lead driven cavity problem, maybe take eight hours. And I was a mechanical engineer. Then computer science guy asked me, what are you running which takes eight hours? <laughs> you know, and it was all numbers, no visual. Right now you see a lot of visualization, right? But if I, that time also the Fluent was available, ANSYS was there. But if I use any of the software during that time, my professor will throw me away. They, they ask you to write a code and do the simulation. Okay, so in my masters, 
I wrote the full CFD code on my own. And if you take a printout, it becomes like a book. Okay. So those were the days. That doesn't mean you need to still continue in the same way, but you need to at least understand what's going on in background. That's very important. Which language did you use in master? Fortran 77. Fortran. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 26. Yes. So now we call it the, the business is very, very, we call it UCA word. Have you heard word UCA? It's business is nowadays very vulnerable, right? Uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. So if you have to deal with such word, then you have to be smart, you have to be a fast, right? In, a, in, in every aspect, and hence the simulations can play a lot of roles. So what we are going to do in next two days, as Ru said that it's introductory training, right? So this is the training for the people who have not done any CFD before, okay? But if you are expert user on CFD, you may not get much out of this, okay? So this course, two days course, will give you the jump start and will give you enough thinking what CFD is, how I can utilize the simulation tool to perform certain um, certain level of simulation. But if you are talking, I want to run a very complex simulation which involves oil, because why I'm saying oil? Because I'm in Saudi, okay? Saudi Aramco is here and I think you join it from Saudi Aramco? Yes. Yeah. So oil, and then it has a water, it has a gas mixed together, and it has a sand too. It's a complex physics if you want to separate them, right? We can utilize CFD because they are using a lot of separators, gravity separators. How the gravity separator works, right? If you want to see, you can do the testing. You can do a lot of testing and try to understand, but it has a cost. It takes a lot of time. Okay, so what kind of a tool? You use calculator, right? Or you don't use? We use this, right? Why you use calculator? Because some numbers which you want to get the answer very quick. And if I decide no, I'm going to add on myself. I don't want calculator. Mm -hmm. So please, it's not a simulation or treat them as a calculator. Please, this is my personal advice. Whole thing is your engineering knowledge. Okay. So if you say that I know ANSYS fluent, yeah, it's good, but I give the the weight is to knowing any software is 15 to 20 percent, not more than that. 30 percent is your knowledge, you are an engineer. Okay. So I'll not take otherwise, I'll keep on. So let me go to the slides. Uh, guys, online, any questions you have, just put your questions through the chat and we will try to accommodate your questions. Plus, from this class, please speak. Whatever questions comes, at least this is after two years or three years I'm coming here. So let's make this session very interactive, okay? And at the end of two days, at least, you pass in the exam, you don't pass in the exam. To be very frank, I don't care, okay? What I care is that you, once you step out of this room after two days, you have a certain, understanding of how the CFD works. Okay. Who wants this card? <laughs> I'm nice. <laughs> so this is the problem. Fine. Yeah. Right. So I'm going Similar to what I said, um, you guys, you guys resonate with me. What I said, you want to change the way things should be done, or it's 
So, okay, a good start. So far, so good. Yeah, do you speak uh, always? <laughs> I don't want you to speak. No, nobody else is speaking. <laughs> I will make them speak. Don't but worry. I think coffee, then... Yeah. So, what is the answers? Okay, some intro. Uh, how many of you know answers? Okay. Okay, so what is the answer? Everyone comes up with an answer. So this is like a soft. So for me, it's like a software that can be using to simulate uh, some computation fluid dynamics. Okay, so just remember what she said. She said ANSYS is a software which is used to simulate computational fluid dynamics. Okay, and I will break this thought and expand it. Okay, so so ANSYS is a simulation leader, and when I'm saying the simulation, doesn't mean only computational fluid dynamics. Okay, because if the flow is happening, it is happening somewhere. It's a structure, maybe inside a pipe, right? So what about the structural simulation? You guys are sitting here. Your phone, uh, there is a Wi Fi here, right? There is a Bluetooth. There are so many radiation around. What about those simulations? Right? We are engineers. We are not going to say we are going to do a structural simulation or an engineering, uh, sorry, a CFD simulation. We are here to solve the problem. And problem is not one physics. Problem is multi physics. So you may say, what is the difference between multi physics and multiple physics? When I treat the physics separately in a silos, it's a multiple physics. But if you want to solve the problem, you need to apply multi physics. Okay. But what we are going to do in this class, only one physics. And as Ru said that we have run many sessions where we have done the fluid structure interaction together, okay? And in future, if we see that there is an interest from you guys, we can go for some other advanced topic too, okay? So ANSYS does the simulation, okay? It's a simulation company. Nothing else. Uh, related to the ANSYS software. Hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Related to ANSYS software, we have seen it evolve from like a single platform like Workbench. Now it has added many, you could, at that time, you could have said many rival softwares like tools, like Fluent, uh, Abacus. And sometimes they are overriding means they are, they are in, uh, in the same, uh, providing similar sort of tool or analysis tool. So how is it possible? Uh, uh, what, uh, what was in their mind that they kept on adding these tools, which were previously, we were thinking like these were separate softwares. And now these are coming under one umbrella, which is ANSYS platform. Okay. Uh, thanks for the question. And the question and is that- The second part of my question, what, what is the, uh, you can say the, next uh, rival to ANSYS. And may I know who who is speaking? If your name and organization, please. Yeah, I'm uh, Mohammed Akhil. I'm a design engineer from Sabic. From Sabic. Okay, welcome. All right. Thanks for uh, both of the questions. The question, if you didn't uh, uh, hear well, the first question is that ANSYS has been acquiring many companies which they had been working in like a standalone, okay? Why? Second question was, who is the competitor of ANSYS or, you know? So, any, any, any of you know? Wow. So ANSYS has been growing and the first line, I don't want to spend much time actually. So guys, still I would prefer uh, questions through the chat because we have a very limited time and we have to uh, get over this introduction. So yes, so I'll answer very quick, uh, quickly this. So ANSYS is a simulation leader and their reason was to be a simulation leader. 
So what are the different technologies, simulation technologies? So they have been acquiring those companies. So ANSYS acquired, let's say, I don't know how many of you know, ICM CFD, it's a meshing tool, okay? They acquired IC. Then they acquired CFX. CFX is general purpose CFD tool, like Fluent, okay? So they acquired CFX. Then they acquired Fluent, and they have been acquiring so many more company just to strengthen their vision to be a simulation leader. That's it, okay? There are many, obviously, without competition. If there is no competition, why ANSYS will do such things, right? So there is a competition, okay? And anybody like Abacus, you can see, right? Um, some other softwares on CFD sites are the, the competitor also. But we are almost 3x largest to our nearest competition in the simulation field. Okay, so that tells the story. We are very committed to the technical support. Very committed. So our technical support ratings are very high. We make our customers successful. Okay, because we cannot, let's say if you get training, that doesn't mean that you are now expert, right? You may have a lot of questions. You may have a lot of things that, hey, how to simulate certain things? You want to have somebody who can discuss with you, right? And that's where the technical part comes into the picture. Can you change the slides for me? So if you look at their simulations are being used in every industry. It's not about CFD or structure, it's sound, right? Electromagnetics, flow, structural, um, or anything, you will see many more. And world-class companies in any industry you see, either it's aerospace, automotive, healthcare, right? Uh, energy sector, consumer market, the, the Customers are using ANSYS. Where they are using? Where simulations can be used? Do you know the product development life cycle? Any, any, any of you? And the modeling. Like how the product is? Let's say this is the product, right? I want to design. So first, first step is that the idea should come in my mind. Then after the ideation phase, you go to into the design phase, right? After the design, what you do? You do some testing, prototyping, mm -hmm. validation, mm -hmm. and then you go for the manufacturing. And then the product is finally launched into market, right? So this is the complete product development life cycle. And maybe 10 years back, the, the, the idea was that in the validation phase, only the simulations were being used, okay? But now the simulations are part of every step of product development cycle. The moment even you think that I have hundreds idea for this product, or maybe some of you may become entrepreneur and have your own company, and you have a product in your mind, which can, it's a very innovative product and you want to design it. And you have hundreds of ideas and you want to test those hundred ideas, maybe in 10 minutes. I need a tool which can give me instant results like a calculator, right? So ANSYS provides you the framework or the software to do that also, okay? Next slide. Next slide. We're going back. I need to move forward. Okay, so what cute course, as you said, I'm from the cute course, I'm working as a technical director. So I got promoted the uh, rule, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. So I'm heading the whole technical uh, department at the cute course. And cute course is a channel part for the ANSYS in the Middle East. So ANSYS doesn't do the business directly here for whole Middle East reason. They work through the channel part. And we are Elite Channel Partners. And why we say there are many categories under the Channel Partnership Program. 
the elite sits at the top because of we maintain exactly same ANSYS structure in our office, okay? We have a, a sales team, we have a technical support team, right? We have, a, we are doing the trainings and we are also performing the consulting services, you know? So that's our. There are some of the core values we at Feud Course believe. Customer is our CEO. Okay, customer is our CEO. The focus is a customer. So my boss is not my CEO, my because customer is my CEO. Okay, but from that's where I get the, the my salary. Okay. Second, innovation. We believe in finding the solution in an innovative way. If you come up with a problem, our technical team tries to bring the innovation and give you the, the solution which you will say, wow, I mean, I never thought about this, okay? So we develop that sense of urgency. We understand our customer's sense of urgency. Maybe you have some, when you submit a technical support to the fluid code, you have some expectations from us that maybe by end of today, I should get the answer. So we understand that and it's very important, okay? And result oriented. Um, Saudi Aramco, Saudi are our biggest customer in this region, uh, in, in Saudi, okay? And we do have office here in Damam also. So my colleague comes from Damam office, okay? I'm based in Dubai um, since last five years. Uh, before that, I worked with Iansys directly in India almost 11 years. So that's the, the little bit. Next slide. Okay, so what, now you can see what answers and this type is. Yeah. <clears throat> Fine now, thank you. So if you look at um, what answers does, at the bottom, physics-based simulation, you can do structural simulations, you can do the fluid simulations, you can do the all electronic simulations. Okay. Semiconductors, optical simulations, 3D design, and photonics. So it's not limited to FEA. What is FEA? Finite element analysis or computational fluid dynamics. It's all the physics which you can think it covers. Not only. So you can perform the simulation at component level. You can perform at the subsystem level also, okay? But ANSYS enables you to do a system level simulation also. What is a system level simulation by the way? When you are studying many things together and want to see the, uh, what would be the, what is the cause and effect type of origin, you know? what if? So you can combine different things. And when I'm combining, that means there should be a framework which provides to connect different softwares, provide different physics, connect different physics. And also you would have heard, maybe you work with the correlations, right? 0D model, 1D model, 2D model, 3D model. So all you can connect and can perform the system level simulations. Digital twins, who knows the digital twin here? Yeah, how will you uh, This is Rishikesh here. I am, Rishikesh. I'm sorry. Yeah, I am working on a digital twin stuff uh, and I am from Sadara here. Okay, good to know. I'm working with your ANSYS team for uh, some of the digital twin uh, proof of concept projects yes. regarding a physics based twins and using the hybrid approach. Somehow we need to connect this. No, not for me, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, thanks for sharing this. Yeah. So uh, it's a whole different advanced topic or digital twin, but how Facebook predict 
that what you are going to purchase or maybe uh, Amazon, they predict about you, right? Yeah, if you are trying to see something, if you are buying a bicycle, they suggest you helmet, right? And sometimes uh, even your phone is listening to you, right? Sure. And then based on that, they know your psychographic and also they know your demographic profile. So they do the profiling and they say that, oh, this guy is like this. He has two kids, wife, his salary is this much, he spent this much. Okay, he is this segment. I have to just push this type of product. So same way, I can predict about my machine. When it is going to fail, what it is going to do in the next five years, okay? The machine is on, let's say, offshore. If there is some problem in the, let's say, the wind turbine, I mean, there is a problem there, I have to send the technician, it's a cost to the company, right? The technician comes back with the information, hey, motor is heating up, right? Then again, they go back, there should be some mechanism. I should know the live health monitoring system of that motor sitting in my control room and knowing that when the motor is going to fail and if it is going to fail, why it is going to fail. And then I should also know. So data analytics, you, you would have heard a lot about data analytics, right? It can give you the answer, what happened and when happened. But if you combine data analytics along with the simulations, it can give you the answer, what happened, when happened, why it happened, and how it happened. That's the beauty of combining these two words. Okay, so this is a different topic. Next. Yeah, go ahead, just put everything. So this is the typical simulation workflow you will see inside the ANSYS, the people who have not used the ANSYS. So ANSYS puts you, give you the framework or a platform, which we call it ANSYS Workbench. ANSYS Workbench is not a software, it's a platform where you can connect different type of physics or softwares, okay? So you might be working on some other CAD tools. So it's CAD independent. You can bring any type of CAD tools like that. So let's say you are working with a Pagia, you are working with the SolidWorks, or you are working with something else. Okay. So any CAD format you can bring inside the, the ANSYS. You start with the geometry. This is a, and whatever I'm saying is, and the people who have not used the simulation, these are the steps everybody will be good. No matter what, what kind of simulation you do, the step will remain same, okay? And I will describe those steps in my next slides, um, in next lecture also. So you start with the geometry. Go back, yes. You start with the geometry, you create a grid. You familiar with the grid mesh? Yeah, MDA, right? And we will discuss why we need a grid. Okay, because I want this lecture to be very basic. You go with some knowledge, you know, not how to use software. Obviously, you will learn the software. Okay. Then you go and maybe run CFD analysis, run structural analysis, or you run electronics or electromagnetic analysis, right? So solver part comes. Once the results are available, then how to analyze those results, right? In form of maybe you are extracting the data or maybe you are visualizing because that's the uh, drawback of the, the testing, you know? You cannot visualize everything. And that's where beautifully you can see what is happening, how the physics is happening, you know? And if you can interpret it, you can get a lot of insight from visualization itself, okay? But be careful, 
We are going to have this training as a CFD, you know, computational fluid dynamics. And my friends, colors are very deceiving. Okay. Sometimes we call, used to call it colorful fluid dynamics. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So don't, once you see the result, you see the nice colors. Wow, we got the result. No, that's not the thing. You should be able to interpret your results, validate them. Simulation alone is nothing. There should be some validation. Testing is very, very important. Okay. Ask question if you have anything in your mind. I'm, I'm giving you this statement to provoke some thought process inside you. Some of you may ask, then why simulation? I can do the testing, right? Next. So now we see the workbench here. If you look at the workbench, I start with the geometry. I can create any complex workflow inside the workbench. So I, what I told you about workbench is a platform. Platform means you can connect different. Don't worry about what is written there. It's just to make you, just to impress you. <laughs> so you cannot understand even what it is. But you can look at, you can correlate from the previous slide. What are the steps? Geometry, mesh, solver, and post process. Four steps, right? And here also, geometry, you create a mesh, you solve it. Now, the beauty of workbench is, I solve a flow inside a pipe, let's say. So what flow is applying on the wall of the pipe? I'm taking very simple example, okay? And if you have any example in your mind, throw on me and then we discuss that, okay? So what flow applies on the wall of the pipe? Pressure, right? What pressure does this to the structure? Force. If pressure is very high, it can deform the pipe. That means the flow is happening. It is affecting my structure. How to do this simulation? But I just did the CFD analysis, right? So you need a structure. So in, in your, maybe when you go to the industry, you have maybe a structural team, you may have a CFD team, you know, and, and some of them are all rounders, they know everything, you know. So ANSYS provides you to connect CFD with the structural solver without worrying anything. You solve CFD, you connect to the structural solver, and data automatically taken. It will transfer the pressure from the from the flow to the wall of the structure. And then it will solve for the stress, deformation, strain, and all this. Make sense? You guys with me or uh, going a little bit uh, over the head? Uh, yeah. You are here, I know. <laughs> okay. Let me let me ask one thing. During the lecture, will you ask about processing in geometry and in physics? You mean parallel? Yes. Yes. No, my problem. That's that the otherwise the rule will not invite me. <laughs> if I don't promote rule for uh, Sahin is for that. Okay, so yeah. I'm um, I'm marketing Shaheen. <laughs> Next time, <laughs> go ahead, just, uh, yeah. So this is, the one more thing I want to, parameter. You, you have heard about the design of experiment, right? Yeah. Sometimes I have a, I want to study the effect of input parameters. Uh, and, and there are optimization techniques and all, I'm not going into that, but you can do the optimization also. But you can also, let's say I want to run I, I, it's a flow inside a pipe, and I want to see that if I change the flow rate, how would be the pressure drop? And the reason for right now, mine has a request to stay close to the mic. And uh, that's where I need that uh, yeah. 
So I think let's do it in yeah lunch break. Because I keep on, I think people are very important. So I need to move towards the people. But at the same time, yes, um, thanks for. Uh, so you're not doing the job. No, I'm actually eating. You're getting? Yeah, I'm okay. getting it. So parameters, right? So the geometry, if let's say I want to run, I want to change the flow rate and I want to see the pressure drop, right? And I have, let's say 10 flow rates and somebody is asking what would be the corresponding pressure drop. So I'm not going to set up each and every simulation and run 10 simulations. Rather, I create my flow rate as a parameter and then everything is done by the workbench. All those 10 runs will be completed automatically and results will be populated. So now parameter, I set the flow rate, but parameter also can be the five diameters. I want to run for 10 five diameters and I want to know the pressure. Do I go, I'm going to create a geometry for all 10? No, you can create a diameter as an input parameter, give the range for the input parameter and job done. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Very good question. <laughs> So I want to now take you through the little bit of background and all of you know, right? On the names, actually I was thinking to hide the names and ask you the names, <laughs> but I didn't do that. So all of you know these guys, the great guys, because if they are not there, I'm not here. Fluid mechanics is not here, right? So, I don't need to need to speak much about them. What is the, just want to tell you one thing. What is the governing equation solved for CFD? What do you call it? Yes, Navier-Stokes equation. Euler's. Navier and Stokes both are here. Okay. Yeah, next slide, I think. Guys, keep uh, putting your questions on the chat. And yeah. you keep on, okay? And if there is any question, I will take a pause, I think, after the slides and go through your questions. Okay, so let's say the problem is given to you. I want to see what is in your hand, okay? What is in your hand means, what are the different way you can solve the problem? The first one, everybody knows, experimental. Now we are talking, going towards the fluid mechanics only, okay? So I'll leave other topics. So we call it experimental fluid dynamics, right? You do the experiment. What is the characteristics of EFD? Accurate. It's accurate, right? Yeah. Limited. And expensive both ways, time wise and money wise. Too. All right, try to. Next. Then you have analytical solution, right? You don't like it. You don't like analytical. So exactly. For, the, for some systems. Yeah. That's why we need to solve numerically. Yes. But don't underestimate also than analytical because sometimes you have a very few things you want to know and that's where sometimes analytical solutions are very useful and you can get the quick answers okay so simple cases again right if you have anything quickly you want to know then you can use the analytical solution Okay, analytical fluid dynamics, AFD. Okay, I'm able to connect with the people back the, because there are some seats. If you move closer to me, it's, it's easier for us to be like a class. So if you find anything, these seats are vacant. 
So anybody can come in the during the the, the tea break or coffee break. Um, next. And then the third one comes computational fluid dynamics. Okay, so computational fluid dynamics, we will see what it is. It can be accurate. Accuracy again dependent on, I will tell you in the, the next lecture. Many people say, yeah, it's okay, but what accuracy you are, uh, what accuracy you can give? Okay. What accuracy you want? Yeah, it's it, it dependent on what you want. We are all engineers, okay? And all of you will be working somewhere, right? So there you have a deadlines. You have to meet the deadline and you have to give the answers. Those are the industrial problem, right? And there you have a timeline maybe for two weeks, three weeks, that's it. So we are, you have to make engineering assumptions. And you have to give the engineering answers, which can solve the problem. Next. So why we do, what is the purpose of the modeling? Okay, first question we should ask, why do we need mathematical models? Why do we need a mathematical model? Is it uh, okay or being more critical? I want you to set the background before we jump into the training. It's okay or you understand, I can skip. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. The way I'm truthful to you, you have to be truthful to me. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just building the, you know, suspense. <laughs> Okay, so why do we need mathematical models? Because any physical process you see, even if I'm drinking a water, it's a physical process, right? This computer is working with physical process. Something is happening in physics. I'm walking with a physical process. I can represent any physical process to the mathematical equations. Why we want? Because it can give a lot of insight because then I have a model, I can play with it and get the answer what I'm looking for. Next. Then you have to look at, you can convert physical processes into the mathematical model, okay? But what are the requirements of these models? Then? So when you are developing the mathematical model, they should be accurate, right? If I'm uh, developing something with uh, no use, then what, uh, what I'm going to do with that, right? Then you can be uh, any mathematician, come up with uh, the equations, it cannot be solved, right? So then for, I can feel proud of coming up with this whole lot of mathematics and equations, but very difficult to solve it, right? And uh, so what we need to do, um, there should be a way we can solve these equations analytically or numerically. We will see that, go quick. So I'm not going simplification. Sometimes we need to do a simplification, right? Some simplifications can be everything you switch or see around is on study. Okay, can we simplify them? It has a study state. We can simplify as a study state or no? Okay. We can, right? Take a, I'm giving you a very simple example. Take a, a bowl, a pour of water and start rotating it. So the surface of the water will evolve and take a certain shape after some time, right? And it will not change if your rotational speed is same. But it was, I can solve it as a transient problem because earlier it was a flat surface. And when I started rotating it, the water started taking the shape, right? 
So it is a it is changing with the time. But if I am interested in final shape of this water inside that bowl, then why do I need to solve for transient? Because I'm interested in final, yes. So then I will solve the steady state. So many problems you can solve using steady state because they are simpler to solve. They take less time, okay? Give you the answer quickly. There are many other effects you can think of or simplify, go to the Now, when you write an equation, so let's say F equal to MA, these all are into the Lagrangian system. I'm going a little bit, uh, uh, you would have studied in fluid mechanics, okay? So all these equations which you see are in Lagrangian form, okay? They are very easy to look at it, okay? But finding the solution is not that, okay? So you need to convert these governing equation into the Eulerian form. So anybody who might be taking, I don't know, CFD course, there is a very, I mean, CFD people can like uh, understand what I'm saying. How to connect these two words? One is the Langrangian form, one is the Eulerian form. Don't put next. Anybody? Yeah, I know you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think, I think most of the audience does not know the Iranian and the Iranian. Yeah. So I, I think that the Lagrangian is the one which is uh, following the, the particle and it's taking the time derivative and the uh, special derivatives. And the Eulerian is, is just only uh, considering the coordinate system. It's just like looking like a, a, a snapshot of the uh, movement of the body. So it, it location only. Uh, that's that's uh, yes, a simple. Perfect. Okay. So in a very simple form, if um, how to okay, let's say I have a dog, okay, and I'm taking the dog for a walk. The dog is with me. Okay, I'm going. Okay, so the dog is moving with me, but I can sit in my home and window. I look at one frame and people are, or maybe are people going through that window. So I'm not changing my frame of reference is same, you know? So that's, so earlier when you get attached to the, uh, here he said the particle, when you are moving along with, so let's say the flow is happening and I'm also going with the flow particle and trying to show where it is going, okay? That's is the Langrangian framework. But if I fix that, okay, I'm going to be here, what comes in and goes, I'm going to look at like this. I'm not moving. That's a Eulerian framework, okay? So, yes, somebody said, yeah, Reynolds transport theorem. So, if you want to transform the equations from the Langrangian framework to the Eulerian framework, because they are easy to solve in Eulerian framework, okay? That's a... Yeah, now we can go fast. Go okay, just to show you, this is our governing equation. Compli comp looking comp complex or? I have one question. Yes. Uh, is, is it available inside of the ANSYS program that we can see the equation inside that? Or is it only just uh, General term on the Nagas equation just show you. This is the people find inside of the, the program and help or something. Yes, the whole theory is based. What is the question we did here? The okay, the question is uh, whether these equations are written somewhere in theory manual of ANSYS or not, oh, or inside the ANSYS. So yes, the whole answer is, is based on, let's say the CFD at least, CFD solvers are based on the Navier-Stokes equation. So whole theory manual is given, how they are solving, what kind of a governing equations they are solving, so everything is there to answer your question. Okay, so just for the people who, 
questions or seeing the first time, I'm showing you the only the momentum equation. So, okay. And momentum equations, what are, it's, it's a mass governing equation, mass conservation, force conservation and energy conservation. Only these three are there. And based on that, we come up with the equation. We solve them numerically and we get the answer. Okay. So you know that if there are three unknowns, how many equations you need? Three. Okay. This is a X momentum equation. What you see momentum is a vector quantity. How many X, Y and G. So three momentum equations, one mass conservation equation, one energy equation to solve very simple problem. How many equations, how many uh, equations? Mass conservation one, three momentum, one energy. Five, right? So let's say if I want to solve uh, for this, so we have a, I'm not solving, let's say isothermal, a density is not changing. So we have U, V, W and pressure, right? So we need, Continuity, momentum X and Y and G, four unknowns, four equations, and you get the solution. You will not be writing any code. I'm just telling you in the background. Okay, so don't get scared that, oh, I have to think how many equations all done by the software. Okay, go next. Go, go, next. And that's where Shaheen comes into the picture again. Again, a marketing. <laughs> Marketing for myself, marketing for ANSYS, and marketing for the uh, supercomputer. Well, it is probably just a uh, practically correct statement, not marketing. Yeah, it's so correct. Without, without computers, you cannot live. Right? Without computers, because the whole simulations are based on, based on what? You are going to solve something, right? You need computers. Mm -hmm. You need a solution in two days or ten days or in one hour. Depends on how many number of codes you are using. Correct. So now what what we started? I have a physical process. I'm pouring a water. Can write a mathematical equations for this by having engineering assumptions. Once that mathematical model is there, that would be in Lagrangian form, right? convert into the Eulerian framework because then I can solve those equations. Which Reynolds, which theorem? Reynolds transport theorem. Once those partial differential equations are in my hand, I use CFD, use my computer and get the solution. So this is the whole story we are going to talk next two days, today and tomorrow, right? Physical processes, up to, you don't need to write those uh, solution that will be provided by the, so this is what ANSYS and this is what Ashahi or your desktop computers. Make sense? Next. These are just to show you conservation of mass. If anybody is so much interested, uh, draw a box, 2D or 3D cube. Mass going in, mass going out, mass going in, mass going out, this minus this, this minus this. So mass, whatever comes in goes out, zero. You will end up with this equation. And it is just two minute job. Right away you can do Taylor's theorem. Okay, next. These are the three forms of Navier stroke equal, some momentum equals. Okay. So, what is CFD? Okay. In this background, CFD is a science, it's an art, or whatever you can say, whatever you like. It's science of predicting fluid flow, heat and mass transfer chemical reaction and related phenomena. Okay. You have to speak in the field of work. There is a comment actually coming from you. Yeah. You Guys, can you can speak. Huh? You can sit here and speak. So yeah, because if I sit, then um, 
I cannot speak. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to be near to the mic and we will fix this, I think, in our next break. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> All right. So what is the fluid flow phenomena? Solid cannot transport it. They can be also transported. Right? That means only uh, liquid uh, gas or fluid, gas, solid, liquid. What can we solve using? So what I'm saying here is just to generalize, any transportive phenomena where you can apply can be solved using CFD. So like mass transfer is a transportive phenomenon. Why? From liquid to it is going to the gas phase. Some of the mass from one phase is going to the another phase, right? Or condensation is a mass transfer phenomenon. Heat transfer is a phenomenon, right? Transportive phenomenon. Yes? What else? Chemical reactions happening. There also can be a one species generating. mixing, generating something else, you know? So any transportive phenomena you can use. Um, CFD, okay? No, no, just be in this. So we solve, now everybody knows what governing equation we solve, Navier-Stokes equation. What Navier-Stokes equation is? Mass conservation, force conservation or momentum conservation and the energy conservation. So we call it Mass conservation equation in CFD world, we call it anybody continuity equation. So if somebody says continuity equation, it's mass conservation. Then what do you have? Three momentum equations, right? And energy equation. That is not the end of story. You add the more physics, your things become more and more and more complex, turbulence chemical reactions you can add. So what CFD can provide you a lot of information. It can provide you a lot of uh, insight, how the pressure is getting distributed, temperature, velocity in time and in space. That's the beauty. If you want to do the same thing in testing, you have to put a sensor, you have to measure it. You cannot put sensor somewhere because of uh, it's not feasible to put the sensor and it costs any sensor you put its cost, right? So here there is no limitations. Anywhere you can know where is the, what is the velocity here in time and in space too. That's the beauty. Not only you can visualize, you can extract the data. What is the drag force? What is the lift force, right? What is the concentration of certain thing? Okay, what is my separation efficiency? So you can extract that. Then how the multiple phases are distributed. If you are not dealing with the single phase flow, there will be multiple uh, phases, liquid, solid, gas, you know, and all together maybe. How they are interacting with each other. All those things can be solved. Then you can go for combustion, right? Different type of you sending the rockets in the space, right? What kind of combustion is happening? Solid combustion, different type of combustion phenomena. There are models you can utilize to solve it and much more. What I'm trying to give you the flavor, okay? Now, I told you the product development life cycle. So not only CFD, all engineering simulations are being used at every stage of product development life cycle. It could be a conceptual studies you are doing where you are doing a lot of ideation, okay? Or detailed product development, optimizations. There is a product in operation 
simulations and there is a, some problem occurring. So you can troubleshoot it using the simulations, okay? And redesign. Any questions comes in your mind? Yes, please. No, I, I wondering whether you're going to talk about the Indian and more in the um, sessions or? No. Or you leave them, can you leave That them was, them? yeah, generally I don't uh, cover that much of theory, okay? But I'm in caust and I need to, and you guys are still studying. So that's where I prepared those slides. Otherwise in standard training, those slides are not covered, but I can discuss offline with you in interest of time. I can tell you a lot of books which describe it very well, and then we can discuss it. But yes, we will not be covering anymore on this. Okay. Okay, there's a quick question, Dinesh. So uh, the user is asking, can we ask them about radiative transfer? Is there any module for that? And can they add external modules uh, in, in Yes, there is so fluent. I think this is a, a question of uh, I have not even started talking about fluent. If you can hold that question to tomorrow session, would be good. I will answer. Can we do radiative yes. transfer? That's a question. Yes. 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 So, uh, modules. Uh, yeah. Yes, we can. Okay, so this will summarize the slide. What we talked about, uh, you have a geometry, you do the meshing. I'm putting these seeds in your mind, you know, so that if I repeat 100 times, at least you will know this after leaving the class, okay? So you have a geometry, you create the mesh, you solve it, and then you post-process. So on the right-hand side top corner, you have a geometry. It's a, some pipe, okay? Whatever you see is called mesh or grid. Grid is nothing but I'm discretizing my model into a small, small control volume, okay? And then whatever the governing equations I told you, I'm going to solve those governing equations on those control volumes. And what I said, mass is going to be conserved, momentum is going to conserve. So I have to make sure if my results is going to be final, I have to make sure that mass is conserved, right? And there are, will be other. So, Whatever you see here on the smaller, that's your control volume. And if anybody gets more interested, like you said about Eilerian and Langrangian, you can go home, take that small control volume, apply the mass conservation, apply the momentum conservation, and you will end up with this equation. This is called generalized navier stoke equation it has everything inside it it is that is the integral form of uh navier stoke equation if you put the phi value equal to one it become your continuity equation now i will not say mass conservation i will say continuity and you will understand so if you put phi equal to one it becomes continuity equation okay and it has every term, it has an unsteady term, it has a diffusion term, it has a convection term, and it has a source term. When, what will happen? Just think about the flow. What is happening inside the flow? Convection, diffusion, it may changing with the time, or there is some source. Nothing less, more than this, right? In a, in a basic form. This equation tells everything. And now you can correlate when I was saying to you, a physical process, represented by mathematical equations. Represent or not? Unsteadiness, diffusion, convection or advection, to represent. I have to solve it. And that's where the ANSYS comes into the picture. You cannot solve this equation analytically. Why? Anybody in mathematics interested? 
So nonlinear, which term of this equation makes nonlinear? Convection. Perfect. So convection part of this equation makes highly nonlinear. When you are somebody, if you are doing structural analysis, it can be linear and nonlinear. But in, in fluid mechanics, everything is nonlinear. Okay. And that's where we need a software to just to put the, the nice pictures here to give you the so combustion right inside the gas turbine engine car all, the, all you can see the structures all these are through the CFD sending the rocket in space droplets how the stream so these are example of various type of uh, complex physics involving single phase and multi-phase. You understand multi-phase, right? Well, different phases are together, right? What is a multi-phase? You said yes, by the way. Yes. Okay. So gas liquid can be multi phase. Liquid liquid can be multi phase? Yes. Yes, they are immiscible at what level? Water and alcohol. Multi phase or not multi? Not multi. If they are not getting mixed at the molecular level, they are multi-phase. If they get mixed at molecular level, then they are they cannot be treated as a multi-phase. So let's say if you are mixing two gases. All right. So I think uh, with this, it's a time for a break. I think right, Ru? Yes. So let's take a fifteen-minute break. Okay. So right now it's what? It's ten thirty. 10.45, let's be back, okay? I'm going to hand over now session to my colleague, Vasi. He will take you through the geometry part, okay? So you remember the story I told you, right? Geometry, machine, solver, post-processing. On this theme, we will proceed, okay? So don't forget the the path, okay? So geometry is a first part of the whole CFD simulation, right? So he will go through the, the geometry, how you can deal with the geometry, how you can create with the, uh, create a geometry, right? What are the typical problems in geometry? And remember you are doing the CFD, right? And most of the time, you guys will you will get a solid model. Flow happens not through the solids, right? So you need to extract the the gas volume out of the solid. So we will look all those details, okay? And then also do a one workshop at least, okay? And there are two to three more workshop, okay? that you need to practice. One workshop we will do here, rest you practice. And if you have any questions tomorrow, let me know. Clear? Any questions from the previous session? Doubt or any? We are now jumping to the software side. All right. So was him? Go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, guys. Uh, so th <clears throat> this is uh, Vasim, and we are going to look into the few of the uh, special features of uh, space claim and how this space claim is going to work and what are the uh, interfaces, right? So at the end of this training, I'm sure that you gonna be uh, get familiarized with these kind of things. One is how we are going to launch uh, the space claim interface, 
uh, what kind of different different operations that you would be able to perform uh, in, inside the space claim. And as an outcome for the CFD part, as, as, as Ajay said, so we will be looking into the volume extraction and as well as enclosure, right? So these two parameters, which you can see here in the above, are actually dependent on your geometry. If your geometry is clean, you're happy. If your geometry is not clean, then definitely you will be having problems in extracting the volume and as well as extracting the enclosures, right? So um, the purpose of this training is just to give you an interface of the space claim, know how we can launch the space claim, know how to how we can create the sketches inside the space claim and prepare the geometry for the CFD analysis, prepare the geometry for FE analysis as well, right? Okay, I hope uh, <clears throat> everyone has access to the space claim, right? So you can start uh, opening the space claim from your laptops and we can go ahead and look for uh, the user interface. In the meantime, I will also show you the same through the slides. All right, so what is this? What is answer space claim, right? So space claim uh, is actually, we call it as a direct uh, modeling tool, right? So now, what do you understand by the direct modeling tool? Okay, so before I answer this, do you have any experience in kind of any kind of tools, the 3D CAD modeling tools? SolidWorks, okay. AutoCAD. AutoCAD, great. Katia, great. Sorry? Pro Engineering. Okay, great. All right. So all those uh, uh, designing tools are based on uh, the hierarchy of the designs, right? First, you have to create the sketch. First, not the sketch. First, you have to create the, select the plane, create the sketch, then extrude, then protrude and do whatsoever, right? But in space claim, there is nothing like that. All you have to do is just draw a sketch and go into the 3D mode and extrude that sketch to the 3D model. So let me show you that how it is actually done. Okay. So the first thing is first, uh, you have to launch the space claim from here. You can just type space claim. 2020, 22 or one I have, all right. So this is the one way of launching the space claim and we call this as uh, a standalone system. The standalone way of launching the uh, space claim. Yes. So when we use space claim and when this design modeler? I'll come back to that. So design modeler is an old tool uh, which we are not, which ANSYS is not actually um, having any kind of updates on that. Okay. So design modeler is was actually a very old tool when I started my career uh, in ANSYS, and I was the one of the oldest user of design modeler. And space claim came into picture way in 2007. Okay. And when I started to learn space claim, to be honest, I never touched design model so far. I, I, I'm using design yeah. model. You, you will come to know, you will come to know the power of using space claim. You will, I was using space claim for the past uh, five years. And now, once I am into the uh, space claim now, I'm not sure. what ever that design model. All right, I hope the same feeling will go with you as well. All right, so as you have launched the space claim, all right, so you will end up with this kind of window. So the first thing is first, uh, if anyone is having issues in accessing the space claim, like for an example, you have any kind of error with respect to the graphics, so you could fix it directly from here. You can go to file, you can go to advanced from here. Sometimes it, it will be a problem, right? So sometimes if, if anyone has uh, any issues in using space claim, when it says graphics is not available, you have to go to file, space claim options. And from there, you can actually select this to let's say direct 3D. Okay, it's just a graphic card issue, right? So you're good to go with it. All right, so now I will just quickly go through what is this term 
uh, why we call this as the <laughs> direct modeling okay so what it means is for an example if i draw anything okay so first i would select a plane right then i would draw a sketch then i go to the 3d mode then i just extrude this right and then let me also draw a circle or a cutout something like this i will come back to these options later on but i'm just trying to give you the keyword of the di direct modeler all right so what were the operations performed first we selected the plane we draw the circle then we extruded the circle then we remove the material from it right so four operations were performed am i correct if you were to do the same operation in catia proe or whatsoever in the structure tree in the tree all of these operations will be recorded right but whereas inside the space claim nothing will be recorded the outcome of the design will only be recorded and this is why it is called as the direct model all right so i hope you were able to relate uh, this thing with your uh, previous cat books all right so let me go to the ppt all right so okay now for what else space claim is used definitely space claim is used in order to for you to create the geometry and in the next step you can also use space claim in order to clean the geometry right what do i mean by clean the geometry right so definitely as a design engineer uh, you will be just bothered to create the 3d shape of the part as an outcome you will only look at the 3d shape of the part right but as a, as a simulation engineer we also need to see how your geometry looks like how beautiful your geometry looks like does your geometry has uh, any kind of multiple faces any duplicates any kind of edges extra edges and so on so for that matter we have to uh, clean the geometry properly right so normally what happens as the simulation engineer we never create the geometry normally right so we used to we actually get the geometry from uh, the, the the 3d cad designers right or from the external vendor so normally what happens when you try to import those geometries inside the space plane because of uh, the standard conversion standard conversion you will be having a kind of a loss of data right and also you will be having certain kind of errors inside the geometry which you can see here this error is nothing related to there are some some tiny gaps between the edges right so these kind of tiny gaps has to be removed why it has to be removed definitely in order to have mesh connectivity right so with this kind of defect geometry neither you will be able to perform the structural analysis neither you will be able to extract uh, the fluid domain and so on so therefore what you have to make a note here is that for any simulation regardless of fea regardless of cfd your geometry cleanup is a must okay and i'm going to show how that is actually done all right so how you're going to launch the space claim definitely you have to go with to windows search and launch the space claim all right so these are some of uh, the ANSYS space claim interface uh, which you can see the first thing is related to the quick access toolbar where you can do a lots of operations and do redo save and everything and this one is ribbon toolbar structural panel and whatsoever and this would be your uh, graphics window right and anything any errors or any pop-ups that can be that through that actually software will either will try to communicate with you right so errors are very important in order to understand what is happening in the software okay so those information will be provided directly inside the status bar all right so now you have various other uh, ribbon toolbars also all right let me just give you a brief here there are different kinds of tabs sketch tab assembly tab repair tab repair tab and so on so how to remember this right so whenever you are creating the geometry from the scratch right 
you actually go with the sketch tab okay and whenever you uh, let's say work on the geometry which is imported from the third party cat tools then you normally work with repair tab okay why the repair tab comes because i've obviously i said because of the geometry conversions there is a certain kind of loss of data happening loss of data happening so for that matter you have to correct your geometry right so in order to correct the geometry you go with the repair tab perform some operations and make sure that your geometry is clean and good before you proceed with the simulation this is what it is all right and next there is something related to the prepare tab that this is uh, where you prepare your models for the either for finite element calculations or other for cfd okay so these options where you see here there is a volume extract and there is also an option where you can see here there is a mid surface extraction where you extract the surface for the thin structures <clears throat> so i am going to show uh, some of the options in the meantime all right so in the structures panel uh, you also have some different other tools where you see the components uh, it supports solid body surface bodies and so on let me just jump to few other slides and focus on the ones which are actually important okay guys uh, this uh, is the one which you actually need to work inside the space plane right so this is called as pull all right so let me stop here and just go back to our interface and show you how that is done <clears throat> so once you have the space limb opened you can just go to new design and that's it you have the window here and you can start work with it. work with it all right so now uh, the first thing is if you go to file if you go to space claim options here uh, you can actually select the units by the way from here right if you go here space claim options units and you have the type of units that you that you wish to select okay and yes there are a lot more other options i'm going to show them one by one but not all together all right so first thing is if you go to the sketch you will get this window all right and then uh, you have this option sketch select new sketch plane if you select this you will have a provision to select the planes let it be top view front view right view whatsoever okay so you can select this put it to the plane view and let me just draw a simple uh, rectangle uh, let it start from the center draw like this and then just go to the mode okay so this is called as the mode 3d mode so now you should be you should be uh, seeing that once i am in the section plane and if i go to the 3d mode you see automatically you have the surface uh, generated okay so now as you have the surface generated what you have to do you have to extrude that right so normally inside the space claim we do not have such kind of options extrude uh, revolve you do not have separate uh, options to do those operations all right so what you have to do here is the pull the pull is the master here master for everything for rotate for revolve for sweep for draft everything okay pull has to be used now how that is utilized so you have to just select the pull okay select this surface and then just pull okay and you have the 3d body generated all right so now if you you might be thinking okay this pull is actually towards one side of uh, the axis can i have it on the other way yes that is also possible select this surface and go ahead with pull both sides okay so this option if you use this option then definitely you will have the symmetry body generated okay so now as i said there is only one body inside 
in the tree that's completely solid okay now what other operations can be done inside the pool right so maybe let's say that you want to add uh, pellets here okay what i would do i just select the edge select this edge select this edge and select this edge okay and then just use pull okay sorry i did not actually select it properly all right so you have to be in the pull and select these edges okay and once you select these edges just pull again and you specify let's say the radius of this is 5 okay and similarly uh, you can do lots of operations here okay so and now whatever you have did here inside this screen which just created a rectangle with an extruded we then added the fillet right so nothing is been recorded okay and this is why i say this is a direct model okay so this is just about the pull tool uh, i will show you more things uh, bit by bit so you understand in a proper way all right yes now how about the selection right so the selection is uh, an important thing here whenever you have two very big assembly and you want to select uh, a loop of the faces how you are going to do okay and once you uh, if you select a surface for once only that face is selected if you double click the face then the entire loop of the faces will be selected triple click will enable you to select the entire body itself okay similarly it goes with the selection of edges as well okay one time selection just select the face for, for twice it is going to select the loop of the faces thrice selecting the entire body itself okay so this is how the operation in space claim looks like mm -hmm. nice okay Yes, this is also one of uh, the important thing here. Like how you are going to control your mouse? What are your mouse controls? Definitely, if you are coming with uh, an experience of using other 3D CAD tools, that's a hurdle, right? But thanks to the developers of Space Claim, they have these kind of controls customized for you. So where you can see, here is yeah navigation you go to the navigations and from here you can actually customize the navigations okay i normally use this one because I, I don't mind if you want to customize your navigation you can just use navigation here and customize your own one all right okay this is about uh, the most controls Okay, I'm skipping the slides, which are not relevant, actually. Yeah, so this is one of the most uh, important kind of a, maybe a query, a question or whatsoever you call. So this is an important thing regarding the space claim, right? What kind of file formats are actually supported inside the space claim? As you can see here, it supports, let's say, AutoCAD files, CATIA V4, V5, V6, Creo files, Parasolid, solid edge solid works and many other okay now let's say you are uh you are intending intending to perform a analysis right you are creating the model inside the let's say solid works okay normally what happens and then you are uh, preparing the geometry for the simulation using the space plane normally what happens you convert that file to igs format and you get that IGS format file inside the space claim, right? So normally because of the conversion, there will be a kind of a loss of data happening, okay? So on that note, you could directly use uh, the step file. You could directly use the SOLIDWORKS file. You could directly use the SOLID edge file, 
so which helps you to minimize the data itself minimize the error itself. okay so this is the best thing that you could do with the space claim all right so so how you can view this actually if you go to file uh, maybe open so these are your uh, file extensions all right so these are your extensions you can have a look together okay all right so moving next what we have yes volume extraction is also one of an important thing uh as ajay said that you have a pipe and fluid is flowing inside the pipe you need to extract uh, the volume inside the pipe right so volume extraction helps to perform the inside fluid flow simulations okay so that is possible inside the space claim myself or ajay is going to uh, show you this part as well okay yes uh, this is the continuation of the previous slide where you can extract the volume so what happens sometimes whenever the geometry is very complex you will not be able to extract the surfaces properly it's just an option to preview the faces of uh, selections before you extract the volume that's it all right so enclosures also definitely uh, you can ex you can actually extract the enclosures to perform the external flow calculations okay so volume is going to perform the internal flow calculations and enclosure will give you the uh, calculations for the external flow okay so you have to uh, understand this difference all right so there are other tools also which we call as combine uh you can delete it you can combine the bodies you can actually perform a lot of operation inside the space claim okay i'm going to show you what uh, exactly it does so before that i would like to create a new design okay just try to add a pipe inside the space claim and then go with the combine pull and other options you are not able to hear ah okay thanks rao <coughs> all right guys i'm sorry about that okay so uh first thing is you have to go to the sketch okay then you could just select any of the plane of your interest let me select this plane okay and put it as a front view so i can draw let's say draw two circles like this okay remember when i hit the 3d mode when i hit this button whatever the sketch profiles that i have here will be converted to the surface right okay so now let's say that uh, i i want to create a pipe like this okay a pipe uh, which is connected with some elbow okay so how I'm, how i am going to do it so that this is actually a very easy thing to do so you do, you actually need not to get worried here all right so what i would do is i just created the internal and external uh, surfaces of this right mm -hmm. and now i just create a point here okay so why why did i create the point no it's not created let me create it yes okay so i have just created a point here all right so you have this surface and you just have a point all right show all okay 
So now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use the pull tool here. I use P, okay? P is just the shortcut that I have used. I can set the shortcut directly from here. If I go to file, we go to file space claim options. All right. Now I can look for, let's say customize. From here, I can set two shortcuts, okay? I have the two shortcuts here. One is for pull and other is for hide, okay? All right. So now I just use pull P, okay? And then select the, that point and then just pull it. Maybe certain distance, okay? Now what I have here is, I have the surface and as well as I have the line, okay? Now further, I just go to, let's say, I will sketch one more line, which is perpendicular to this. Okay. And now I can just use this, maybe, yes, this would be the best. Create rounded corners. All right. So I can use this. and create a corner, maybe with some 18 or whatsoever, okay? All right, so now I have this pipe, which is actually created through a line bodies, through the curves. Now I need to uh, make sure that this surface of the pipe follows this trajectory. Okay, I need to basically sweep this. So for that matter, I can just go to pull again. All right, select this surface and then use this guy, sweep, hold control, select all the three lines and then use this option, which we call it as full pull, okay? Okay, so now you have the pipe, which is created very easy. All right. So uh, apart from that uh, pull tool, you can use for a lot of operations actually. Okay, now let's say that maybe you want to change uh, the length of this pipe. You have to just go to the pull P, press P, select the surface and just pull it, okay? Similarly, if you want to go here, select the surface and then just pull it, okay? Now, other option that I, I also want to show here is, let's say uh, you have uh, some supports provided at the bottom of the pipe, okay? at some distance, let's say. Now, you can actually use this pull to just uh, split this surface of the pipe, okay? So what I would do is, I'll just select the edge, okay? Just press P, pull, and now I have uh, this option, which is that one, copy edge, okay? I select this copy H and just copy the H. I hold control. Okay. So like this, you can actually split the pipes with the single H. Okay. So in order to do that, you have to use the copy H option. I will repeat again, go to pull, select this edge, then you have this copy edge option appearing. Select this, okay? And then just 
pull this. If you hold control, then you will have a provision to copy the multiple uh, edges. Okay. And that's it. All right. So this is about uh, the pull tool. Okay. So let's move back to the slide. Yeah. So this slide uh, will actually demonstrate some other operations such as combine, uh, split body, split project. So what is actually meant by uh, the combine? As the name suggests, combine means it just combines the two different bodies, right? So how that is done using the pull tool. And in the same time, I will also show uh, the usage of the split body, okay? Then you will be able to appreciate the difference between the combine and as well as the split body, okay? When the combine is used and when the split body is used, okay? So combine uh, is actually used for three operations. First operation is obviously, as the name suggests, it combines. Second, it will split the body. Third, it will delete the body, okay? So for three operations, it is used. Now I'm going to show you an example so you understand in a better way. Okay. All right. So let me draw a rectangular block, something like, like this. Okay, let me choose a wrong plane. Just a circle. All right. Then select this. Okay, let me extrude this. All right. So in the meantime, I will also show you some other option uh, inside the pool. Okay. So just select this face. Now I have to pull this surface. Okay, why this is cutting actually? <clears throat> okay, let me do one thing. Let me pull this first. Okay, and then use pull and use this up to. Today is not my good day actually. Okay. So let me do in the other way. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me create a new component. Then, okay. <coughs> Maybe I can create cylinder. Extrude this here okay then right click and then i again just activate content okay now as you can see here there are actually two bodies okay one is the cylindrical body and other is a rectangular body okay there are two bodies first body second one okay now, I'm actually using the combined tool, all right? So, if you go to the design, I can use this combine, all right? I just combine both of the bodies, okay? So, this is the first purpose of using the combined tool. And combine, if you go to the combine, you can also see the three different options, okay? The first is definitely to combine the bodies together. And the second option is 
to maybe split the body. Okay. Now, if I select the split body, okay. So nothing appears. Just there is only one cutter coming here. So what it means? It means that we have to select one extra thing which is called plane. Okay. We need to create a plane so that the cutter identifies through which plane of the body it has to cut. All right. So now I have to create a plane for this. So where from I get that? So I can get it from here. Right. Just select this plane and select this. Okay. So once you have done with this part, then you can you, you can just simply go to uh, the combine, use this, and then select this. Okay. So now you have two bodies split it. All right. In the similar manner, you can also delete this which of any one of the body which you are not interested okay so this is about the combined tool all right so i'll keep this aside and also show you the difference between the combine and as well as the split okay so now as you understood that in order to combine the body or split the body under the combined option you have to create a plane right so let's do one thing here I will copy this body, these two bodies. I'll just go to move. Okay. I hold control. Now I need to copy the body. Okay. So what did I do? I just select these two bodies. All right. And then go to move. And I hold control. And then move this. Okay. So the body is moved. And also, it, it, it is actually copied, you mean to say, you can say in that way, okay? It has a replicated its original position and now we have the other position as well. So, uh, now let, let me just use this combine to combine it. Okay. Now, I go with uh, the split body. Okay, so the split body with this option, I can also split the body. Okay, if I use this, select this body, and now if I just select a face, automatically the plane is created. Okay, but this doesn't happen with the combine, right? So, combine requires the creation of a plane in order to split the body. Okay, but split body, it does not require that criteria. What it only requires is that you select a body and if you just select a face, the plane will be created to that face automatically. Okay. So this is a good option and I normally use this option a lot. Okay. It has its own benefit. Now, another way, if you use the split body, now you can actually split the body through it circumferentially. Now, I just select this the circumference of the cylinder now i can split the body like this but i cannot split the body using the combine that's not possible okay because combine requires a creation of a plane and plane is only created in three axes x y z right as it is a curvature combine does not work here and for this case split body works here okay depending upon the requirement depending upon the scenario you have to work with these two options Okay, and there are other uh, other options as well, such as split project. Those are different uh, kind of stories here, but I will try to explain what it is. Okay, so so far we discussed about combine. Now you know combine is used to combine the body, split the body, delete the body. Split body is also used to uh, split the body, and it requires to create a plane, right? But what about the split? Split refers to that you can actually split the surfaces of the body. Okay. Now you have this, just select the split, just select this face. Okay. And you can specify. You just have to use any one of the options for me. Okay. Let's say I'm going to select this edge. 
from this edge i say space claim that okay split this edge with the 20 percent of the length okay this is going to split it okay so this is the good part of the split we have different uh, other options through the split as well such as you go this you go here you go here there are a lot of other options you can explore it anyhow but the basic concept of using split is to split the faces sometimes it is necessary to split the faces depending upon the loading uh, that is acting on the surface right so on that note you use the split options okay so let me go back to this slide okay <clears throat> yes so as none of you know uh, we have used the combine so this is how it works Spl split body you also know how to use the split body the only difference between that is it does not use the creation of a plane combine uses the creation of a plane you can also split the body uh, along the cylinder circumference of the cylinder but whereas in the combine you cannot do it so that's the uh, difference okay so now uh, we will quickly go through uh, through this guy repair geometry why uh, there is a need of repair okay so the need of repair is to let's say that you are performing a finite element calculations or the cfd calculations in order to transfer the load or in order to transfer the flow there should be a good connectivity between the meshes okay whenever you discretize the structure the node to node connectivity connectivity should be there in order to transfer the loads movements or flow so in order to have that kind of connectivity your geometry should be good if this is not good then definitely you will end up with a lot of simulation errors okay that is why normally 60 to 70 percent of engineers time is invested in pre-processing okay pre-processing is very very important okay if you are done with the pre-processing you will uh, get the results for sure okay then interpreting the results is a, is a different story but this is a good start uh, to begin with any simulation whether it might be fea whether it might be the cfd geometry repair is very important okay so now we will try to understand uh, how we can explore these options inside the space game okay all right so let's assume that uh, you have a geometry and you're just importing the geometry and let me take this one okay i have already this file uh, with me i just imported this okay now you see now this body seems to be uh, transparent right okay so let me change this to opaque okay now if you look at this geometry the geometry's shape and size itself will tell that this is a 3d right right but the thing is uh, if you look at the structure of this you see there are surfaces okay is it possible to have the surface surfaces inside the solid geometry no if it has the surfaces then you will have to assign the thickness for this by looking at the geometry itself one can say that it's a 3d body right it's an entire volume if you if you have only the surfaces then it will ask you the thickness whenever you mesh it whenever you uh, uh, apply some loads maybe it is going to ask you thickness so this is not good right so for that matter you have to clean the geometry so this is one of a kind of an indication saying that uh, your geometry is actually not good by looking at the geometry i can say this is the 3d geometry but when i look at, at the tree it says it has lot number of surfaces okay so this is your first indication to a diagnostic uh, thing here okay now how you are going to fix it so there is a separate uh, tab called repair okay 
So this guy is going to help us in identifying how in identifying uh, the errors inside the geometry. So there is a proper hierarchy here. One is stitch, gaps, missing faces, split edges. Okay. This is actually the best practice, not only for this, for the entire uh, uh, simulations that you perform, FEA, CFD, or whatsoever. Whenever you get a geometry from uh, the 3D CAD modeling tool, import that and try to check the geometry first. Okay. Now, if you go to the repair, you have this kind of an option, stitch. Okay. Go to the stitch. And this guy is actually highlighting you uh, some gaps between the lines. Okay. So it means that, so these edges are actually not connected to each other. Okay. So you have to stitch it just as a tailor stitching the clothes. That's it. Okay. Then you have this. But still, if you see here that there is a still, still a surface. But if I go undo, there are actually many surfaces here, right? Once you select this stitch and give check mark, so those many surfaces are reduced to a single surface, right? But still, the problem is not fixed, okay? So how we are going to address that? Then you you come with these gaps. You check with the gaps. If you check with the gaps. It says no areas have been filled. Yes. Guys, uh, could you please just mute yourself? Okay. All right. So sorry to for the interruption. Okay, so then we check with the gaps. All right. So with the gaps, what happens? Uh, I'll just select everything. First stitch, no. Then gaps. Gaps also, it says there are no gaps. Then I check with the missing faces. Okay. So with the missing faces, uh, there are two actually faces which are actually missing here. Okay. Now, see what I would say, don't just blindly follow the software okay after all it's a black box right so you have to visually inspect the area of the pro problematic right so what you would do is uh, you would just select zoom to fit okay you come here you see this okay this is the problematic area and then you again click on this check mark that is the previous you go to the previous and see this one okay so basically uh, i mean here to say you can inspect the problematic areas before uh, fixing them okay because uh, we don't know uh, maybe there is a gap meant to be here purposefully maybe if you click yes this is going to close the gap it's better to have a visual inspection of these gaps before you perform any operation okay so once you identify these uh, missing faces just click yes and that's it that's it okay now you have the solid okay so now you are uh, good to go with this okay so this is what uh, this is explained uh, in the slides okay so there are actually uh, missing faces free faces small faces small edges sharp angles hard edges so actually these are kinds of common issues which you found uh, which you find uh, inside your geometry okay so these has to be fixed before you perform any sim simulation okay so if you perform the finite elements uh, simulation if you have these kind of uh, issues i am sure definitely you will have you, your problem will not going to solve if you have these kind of issues inside the CFD, you will not be able to extract the volumes and so on. Okay. So therefore, please fix it uh, before you attempt to do any simulation.
Okay. So these are the common errors that you see. Uh, first error is that uh, the missing face. So there are many faces, but at a single face, you see that this is uh, actually missing. And this is highlighted by uh, a red one. Okay. So this is not good. And you also have uh, the free faces. You have the small gaps. So there is actually a small gap between these two edges, right? So this has to be re removed. Why this has to be removed? Okay, fine. So this, it doesn't have any kind of errors, but it has some extra edges. So normally what happens, uh, ANSYS is going to add some elements between these two edges, okay? If there is a small gap between the, these two edges, it is, it is actually going to add some element, okay? And this is actually creating, uh, will create a problem and inside the mesh quality, inside the convergence, okay? So you have to fix this up. And then you come with the small edges, sharp angles, hard edges and so on, okay? So this is very important for you to repair the geometry. All right, so this is the same old story uh, that we discussed. Yeah, so for these methods, whatever we discussed from step by step, first we go to the stitch gaps, missing faces and so on. So these are the manual ways to fix the issue. Okay, is there any automated way to do it? Is there any, any automated way? Yes, there is an automated way. So what is that? Uh, you have to be here on the solid. Okay, right click and you have to check the geometry, okay? If you check the geometry, if there are any issues, it is going to highlight here, okay? For now, you are safe, okay? There are no issues. This is how you can check it, all right? If it's worse for faces, do you need to check them one by one or do you check? Uh, no, just uh, you have to be here on the structure tree and just check the geometry, okay? If if there is a problem in all the faces, it is going to highlight at once. All right. Okay, so this is the workshop uh, that you have to practice. Maybe uh, you can practice this after the break, uh, but before leaving to the break, I have another slide to cover and then we'll uh, look into it. All right. Okay. So what you need to understand here in the space claim is that uh, there are actually three important modes that you have to look inside the space claim. Okay. So what are those modes? Three modes, right? 3D mode, sketch mode, uh, and the section mode, okay? So sketch mode, you are well aware of it. 3D mode, 3D mode also, you are, you are well aware of it. And last comes the sketch mode, okay? So, so yeah, sorry, section mode. So the section mode is going to uh, give you an insight details of the geometric uh, complexities, okay? Yes, this is what it is. Uh, there are two ways of doing it. I will show you, but just be aware that uh, these kind of options are available inside answers. Okay. So I'm skipping these slides because this is not that relevant. Uh, you can go through it uh, later on. I'm going to cover the ones which are actually important. Okay. So another, another side of the story is there are four main tools. Okay. One is pull, move, fill, and combine. So three modes with four tools three what are those three modes section mode sketch mode and as well as yeah 3d, 3D. mode yes exactly and there are other four main tools inside the space claim one is the pull tool okay so we have seen how you can how you have to pull it pull tool next is move tool we have also seen that but i, I can again show you that fill tool and the combined tool. So combined tool, you have already seen it, okay? So these are the four main tools that you use inside the space game to perform almost all the operations, okay? All right, 
So this slide is actually very good for you to understand what it is. First, you have the surface, okay? So if you be here on the surface and select the surface and try to pull the surface, what happens? You get a 3D part, okay? Now, you just select the edge and you pull this edge, what you get? Surface, right? And you select the point, pull it up, you get the line, okay? So been to say pull tool works for all the three kinds of geometries, whether it might be surface, line, or edge. Okay, so this is very clear. Yes, uh, these are some of the other options. Uh, we have already been through these options. I have shown how you can sweep it, how we can pull, and you can try the other options as well. Okay, so move tool is another thing here so basically it will help you to move uh, the objects I, I will show you one more time how that is done and next is the fill tool fill tool is nothing but you are just deleting the circles that's it just select the circle and hit delete or just use this option both are the same all right so let me just quickly show you uh, the move tool here Okay. So like this. Maybe I, I will draw some, maybe let's say some blocks like this. Okay, now what I would do is uh, just try to move the blocks, okay? So for that matter, I can use the move tools. I just press M, okay? <coughs> Once you use the move tool, the important thing that you need to understand here is don't get confused here, okay? So when I was learning the space claim, okay, because I was uh, used to design modeler, Okay, but when I was learning the space claim, I always did a mistake. So whenever I use the move tool, I just selected only the face. Okay, and then I was moving it. It only it it actually works in a similar way as the pull tool. Okay, so now if you have to you if you have to move this entire uh, body itself, I would select I would say that select the body. Okay, and then you can use this option to move. All right. Yeah. So I'll I'll repeat one more time. All right. So whenever you use uh, the surface and you use this option to try to move this, it works same as the pull tool. Okay. Now, if you want to move the entire body, you could just select the body or triple click the body. Okay. You would see the body will be selected, and now. You can just move it wherever to your requirement. All right. So this is one thing here. Okay. And what about, okay, duplicating the body? The same thing goes with this. Just select this. Okay. And hold control and you can move it. Sorry, I did not select it properly. Yeah, hold control and move it. Okay. And now uh, you can also move the body through the trajectory. Okay. Maybe you have a complex design. Okay. And you're working with some of the complex futures. So just imagine that you have this future, which is very complicated and you need to move through along the trajectory. So for that matter, you can just use move tool as well. I use the move tool here. Okay, and then use this option, which one, yeah, move along the trajectory. I can select these edges and move it as simple as that. It is going to maintain the same distance. It is going to move. Okay, so this is one of a 
good thing inside the space team. There are actually a lot of other options as well. Uh, here, I will show you. Fine. Let me copy this body. On, on, okay, uh, fine. Let me not copy. Just I will create a plane here at this moment. Okay. Now, I will just move this plane. Okay. In order to move the plane also, you can just use move. If you want to copy the plane, just press control and the replica will be here. Okay. Now, let's say that uh, I want to move this body here at this plane. So what I do, I select this, uh, click on move. Okay. And use the, I use this option up to, because this is my reference option. Okay. Just click this and select the plane. All right. And now I also, I hold control just to have a duplicate body. That's it. You have it here. Okay. Now this is the first scenario. All right. Now the second scenario is that uh, I have this body, okay, which is basically moved to this plane at the center. I don't need at the center, maybe at certain position. Yeah. So how do I do that? All right. So uh, what I could do is that let's say. Uh, I just control undo and then if you go to the move, select this. Okay. Now you would see that if I select the entire body, my move handle is actually at the center of the body, right? It's at the center. Now I want to move in a such a way that, that this face touches this plane. Earlier, if I move this body, it was at the center. Now I don't want to do in that way. I have to move this body in a such a way that this face of the body is just touching the plane. So for that matter, I have to actually fix it. I have to anchor, right? So I, I come here and just select this edge. Okay. And now I use up to, and then click this one. Okay. Hope you, hope you got the difference, right? So these are the ways of how you can move it. Okay. All right. So I think uh, it's the time for the lunch, right? At 12. Yeah, I have one question. Yeah. Can you create the vulnerable and change the diameter of some type or something? Of course, you can do that. You can do that. So variable, you mean to say the cat parameter, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I it's it. a very good question actually i'm i'm showing it to you now so yeah yeah this is very much possible, yeah, sure. possible. Yeah. i will show it to you now okay. so uh what you could do is even for the parameters let's say uh you're changing the length of this Okay, so just select this face, all right, and you have this option called ruler. Okay, just use this and maybe select somewhere here and click P. So this is going to create a parameter for you. Okay, and now if you go to the groups at the ruler dimensions, you can actually, actually specify the distances here. Maybe it's 44. 40 whatsoever okay not only this we can actually you can also parameterize the position of uh, these components okay so let me also show you that so in order to do that definitely in order to position these components uh, you have to use move tool okay because you are trying to move this component to certain position for your analysis right so for that matter you have to use move uh, i select this Make sure that the body is selected actually. Triple click, the body will be selected. Okay. 
or else you can just go here, locate in the structure tree and select this from here. Okay. I think this is split at all the moment. It's combined. Okay. Now, if I go to the move, okay, this is this fine. All right. Now, let's say that you are changing the position of this to a certain distance. Now, what I have to do is that uh, let's say you are moving this with respect to the Z direction. So, you have to select this. First, click this axis. Okay. And then come to the ruler. And then specify the distance. Let's say I click this and then P. P is going to create the parameter for you. If you again go to the groups here, now you can change 20. Okay, 20 is not changing. Maybe 25. Okay minus 20 a lot of things can be done i am thinking for example in control we have a section of parameters mm -hmm. and we can write for example d equal one meter mm -hmm. and automatically i will change the my geometry mm -hmm. yeah. is, is there a section here uh, similar for example as parameters have you shown the workbench before doing this? No, no, I'm not. Okay, so I'll in the next lecture, I'll take you the... So just to say any operations you do in the geometry, mm -hmm. okay, you can parameterize it. Nice. Okay, so let's say you are changing the diameter of the cylinder. You are changing the position, okay? You are rotating something. You want to put angle as a parameter. So everything can be parameterized. Not only the geometry, the moment we look at from geometry to the mesh to the solver, okay, where the physics parameter comes into the picture, everything can be parameterized. And you will be able to see the, the table of the parameters where you can change and drag the whole simulation. Okay, so we will show you that. And you can also, just to add, Ajay, you can also insert the equation. Suppose one of equations, suppose one of the parameter is dependent on the other. If one parameter is raised, other parameter other parameter has to be increased two times of that parameter. Okay. So you can ins also insert the equations. And as I just said, that is going through the workbench. So what we covered so far? So we covered tool, we covered make, and let me just show you here. I think we need to cover this one, extracting the fluid volume. Okay, we have also, yeah, we have done with the repair. We've done the repair. Yeah. So okay. we have to do with this. So, which one? Yeah. So just remember the four tools before you leave from here on the geometry. What are those four? Tools? Uh, yeah, so everything you can do using all these. Yesterday, so yesterday I went a few of the reports. Uh, to so guys, uh, we are doing this workshop. If anybody online interested, um, <clears throat> and try if you have the software and. And the material, material is there with you, but. Okay, uh, so guys, uh, let us work on this workshop. It's very interesting one. Hope you have, uh, everyone has the uh, material available on hand and you have to basically open this workshop. Uh, yeah, this workshop, creating mixing tree. 
So basically what we are going to do here is uh, you have a pipe, horizontal pipe and a vertical pipe coming in and there is a junction between the two here, right? So the same thing we are trying to execute inside the space claim now, okay? So you can follow me, follow the instructions step by step. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Or if you have any issues, you can share me your screen and I can help you with uh, diagnosing those issues. All right. Yeah, if you don't have the software and most of them, let's say that would be the case, then just look at the, at least uh, the steps which Wasim is following. And uh, later on, whenever you get time, you can just go through it. But he will quickly demonstrate you the how to do it. All right. So basically, uh, Classroom, please. so basically what we are doing here is the first thing is uh, we go to the space claim options, uh, go to the units, change the units to metric, okay, and then click okay. And now uh, you go to the sketch mode, uh, you add, uh, let's say a circle, maybe I take this, this one, I take this to be as my reference plane, then add two circles, all right? Okay, so once you have this, you're good to go. Then, excuse me, excuse me. Yes. The screen is freezing. Could you, be, could you please check that? Okay, just a minute. Yes. Yes, I hope now with this is clear. Thank you for bringing that. All right, so let me do it from the beginning. So hope everyone will follow it. All right, so the first thing is <clears throat> go to the file, uh, space claim options. From here, you could set your units to metric or whatsoever, then click okay. And then uh, go to the circle. So with this, you can actually select any any of the planes so let me take up the 3d mode take up a circle and just select any one of the plane and draw the circle okay and then select this pull use pull and you can pull this all right so maybe to a certain distance all right, so then what's gonna happen here? So there is another pipe, which is joining it from the top. So what you could do is, as now you can see here, the plane is exactly at the center, right? So now I wish to create a pipe, a T section, which is joining the pipe at the center. All right, so how I can do it? So the thing is I can actually select two of the faces and select uh, the coordinate system. All right, so now as I have the coordinate system here, what I could do is I can use the move. Why I'm moving the coordinate system? Because if I try and select here to add a circle, let's say I add a circle here, okay? So this will take the reference from here. I don't want like this. Okay, I need some pipe somewhere at this height. So for that matter, I will delete this. And I just go to move. I can select move. Yeah, it's better. I would just create a plane for the reference. All right, now I will go with the move use this and move this to a certain distance, all right? Okay, now I can just use this one like this, update, then add two circles here, all right? And just go to the 3D mode. So now what happens? Again, you can use the pull tool, okay? Use the pull, 
this one now you can use this up to all right if you use up to then uh, we can choose the inner cylinder of the pipe all right so you have done that now if you look at here there is actually material right we we actually need to remove the material from this pipe agreed so for that matter uh, which command is the best here either combine is the best or split body is the best split body is the best okay why the split body is the best because it is going to split the body with respect to the circumference of the inner cylinder okay all right so now if, if i split this body you should see that the body has been splitted okay now we don't need this the inner portion of uh, the pipe because it is a cutout right so we can remove it i can just delete or click on this and that's it so we have removed the material okay now you see that there is something cut again happening here uh, which is basically coming from the bow operation so you can just select this this and just combine it that's it okay so there is a, a material which is actually been splitted right yeah. you can select this this and just combine okay that's it now uh, having said that if you look to this workshop again if you look to this workshop you also have fillets added uh, at the interior of the pipe right so if you could see here yeah so there are also fillets added at the interior of the pipe so let me go to that section okay so both the exterior of the pipe also has some fillet and the interior of the pipe also has some fillet so how are we going to uh, give this kind of fillet for a pipe so the workshop says that if you go to the section mode of the pull it is beneficial okay so let's do this again through our screen okay <clears throat> so now uh, the best way is to take the section plane okay so where you will find uh, the section mode so basically you will have it from here okay so just to remind you that uh, in space claim we have three different modes right section mode uh, 3d mode and as well as sketch mode right so three uh, modes we have inside the space claim, right? So I am using now the section mode. Okay. So there are actually two ways that you can do it. The section mode. First is just select the section mode and just select the plane. Okay. And now you should see that you have a section mode. Okay. The other way is that you could also do is that just select maybe yes y and z axis hold control while selecting this axis and then again go to the section mode okay so you have the same result all right so once you have this select this and then okay select this edge of the pipe corner okay and press p or pull okay just give some distance 
some radius. Maybe pi. Pi is more. I would give it as two. Okay. All right. So we have done with uh, the interior fillet, right? So the interior fillet was difficult actually because we need to take the section and then provide the fillet. Okay. But whereas uh, in case of exterior fillet, that's not the case. So what we do there is just select the exterior edge of the pipe and then mention the radius of it. Okay. And two. Okay. So now we have this. Okay. Okay. So this is as simple as that. And that's it. Uh, I think we are done with this. And the rest of the part is to extract uh, the volume here. So we'll do it together in some time. All right. So, and now uh, the last and final option here is to extract uh, the volume for this because consider that you have a fluid flowing inside the pipe and you want to extract uh, or you want to perform the fluid uh, CFD analysis for this pipe. So, for that matter, what you do is volume extract. You go to the volume extract and select the faces. This one, this one. You actually need to close all of the faces and then select any one of the, let's say, the face, the seeding face. Okay. If you select this face, you can actually use this cursor to to and fro so as to understand whether all the internal faces have been selected or not. Okay. So once you are done with that, then just click S yes and you are good to go. Now you have the solid and you have the volume. Okay. So this is how you extract the volume from a particular uh, pipe from this pipe. Okay. All right. Uh, I hope that was clear. And I'll just allow some time, maybe 10 minutes of time for you to practice. And we can look to the other slides later. Do I still keep the solid one or, or, or can I reduce that three into just only the void if I'm not using the, the solid in the simulation? Yeah, yeah, you are not using the solid inside the simulation. Just you just use the volume. Okay. For but for the structural simulations, uh, let's say you want to consider this solid because for the structural simulations, we, we look for the stresses outside of the solid area. Okay. But for the CFD simulations, you look for uh, the only volume. It depends on your simulation. But for CFD, definitely you don't use this. Uh, it would be good for the output later on, right? Uh, to show the the flow streams and those things, but uh, but not 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 uh, uh, for the calculate uh, the solver. It's not part of the solver, but uh, only for the uh, out. Okay, okay. I I hold this question uh, for a minute. So may 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 I know who who is speaking here? Uh, Doctor Mazen Abu Haras here from uh, Higher Colleges of Technology at uh, United. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nazar. Okay, okay, Nazar. Uh, just a minute. Uh, I will have our uh, COD expert here to address your concern. Okay. Once you come, I'll let you know. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
so the extracting of the fluid is actually not part of the workshop all right so don't get confused so just uh, try to generate the solid pot as shown here that's it okay for the extraction uh, we will have another session now so within some time we can show it again
Thank you. 
ओके गाइस प्लीज हैव ए लुक हियर so let me create the pipe from the beginning itself okay so we'll take up a plane somewhere here draw two circles all right use pull all right okay now i want another pipe to connect this pipe from the top so what i do first thing is i will select i need to select an origin right i will set an axis okay and then i will move this axis to a certain distance all right for that purpose i use move tool all right let's say to this one all right now again i select sketch mode from the top i need to have a pipe so i select y axis okay if you select x it is different z is different so for us we require from the top okay so i select y okay then 
I use pull, select the surface, use P and use up to. I select it till here. Okay. All right. So now you see that still there is a material here. Normally, we should not have any material here, right? So for this matter, what we can do is we can spl use split body in order to remove this material. Okay. So you go to design, split body, use this body, okay, and use this circumference in order to remove the material. Okay. Now just delete this. Okay. And now you can look in the section mode. Just press Y. Okay. For you to go there. Use section mode and press on Y axis. Sorry, X axis. Now you have this. Okay. When you come here, you need to add what fillet. Just select this. Yeah, that is actually because we have removed the material, right? So even the material has been splitted at the bottom. If you don't need that, just use this, use this and combine it. Okay. All right. So again, you go to the section mode to take X axis. Now we can see that, okay, we have already done the fillet here. So similarly, we can do the fillet for the outer radius. Okay, as simple as that. The question on the yeah. step. Which one? And the tutorial. Which question is that? More, 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 more. more. Up. I mean, up, 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 down. Up, up, up. Yeah. Go down. Mm -hmm. This one. What they are doing here? Unable to pull to use a pen with the So let the edge on represent the same as this. Actually, they have to split it. Okay, so they have to split it. Yeah, split it. Okay, so we, they have to split it because normally we don't have the material like that. Yeah, but how to get this edge? I think there is some problem with the tutorial or yeah, something. Yeah, something. Yeah. One step. So what they, they want to remove the material. Yeah, remove the material. Okay. Yeah. So removing the material. So guys, what you can do is I actually you have to look at the T junction. So you have to remove the central material, right? Which is covering. Yeah. So you can take the body and from the circumference you can just split it. So this portion will go away. And then you can just get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think we have, I need to move. Um, I want to show you a few things on the field volume extraction. Uh, we are running a little bit. Okay. Which, which So he's here. Uh, hi, Nazar. I hope you are here. So Ajay is here. You can please uh, ask your question on the CFD part. Yeah, I was just asking about the uh, whether we uh, um, can uh, eliminate uh, or suppress the solid uh, if only considering the CFD uh, simulation without uh, structure information. So yeah, that we will see in upcoming lecture. There are many ways to do that. Okay. Okay.
You cannot remove just the selection. You're just deleting, you're just selecting the case. Because there is a complete body. So you have to locate the body in the screen. Now the bind. So what you did is you know that you wanted to delete. Yes. It is like the mm -hmm. So that's not the body. Actually, there's a complete body here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to go here, for example. This you don't you don't realize that there is a body in the thing. Right? So what you have to do is select this page, right click. Locate in structure. Okay. So this one. So All right, guys, let's uh, we can do it. Let's move on. Um, can I get your attention? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, this is very important part which I'm going to show you is the fluid volume extraction means so far you were creating a solid right a t junction uh, with the space claim you need to do a lot of hand like session you know so to get into that because there are so many things so this is the let's say a cad model i imported okay many times you will be importing the cad model right and then cad model it's not ideal word but it would be a dirty geometry, right? There will be a lot of holes, or maybe uh, geometry is not watertight, or maybe all, all those are surfaces, right? So you need to repair the geometry in order to make it ready for the simulation, right? So there is a, some geometry preparation needs to be done, okay? So, and, and then the last part of the geometry preparation is extracting the gas volume or the fluid volume, okay? Once your geometry is perfect, ready, and you say, then you go for the fluid extraction, okay? And I'll show you that. So here, let's say if you have a some geometry, it's a solid model. It's called oil pan. I don't know what it is, okay? But I can see that there are three openings here. One, two, three, and then it is open from bottom, okay? Now, if you look at the fluid mechanics, what type of analysis you can do? External and internal, okay? Here we are trying to do internal flow analysis, okay? No external. Like if you are doing aerodynamics or something, that's so external flow analysis. So in this case, I have this geometry. So what you have to do, go to the prepare mode. And so far what you have done is a sketch. This is the sketch mode where you want to construct any geometry on your own, right? There are two ways to do the geometry. One, you bring from outside or you make your own geometry. And once you want to make your own geometry, utilize the sketch mode because if you rotate 
a, let's say a line, it becomes surface. If you rotate a surface, it becomes 3D, right? And you will use those pull, move, fill, you know, combined tools. Mm -hmm. Using all only four tools, you can do all Boolean operations. Okay, and you can you can create a, a any any 3D solid. Okay, or you can directly create the fluid volume. Up to you. Okay, if you geometry is so simple, then and most of the time when you are doing the CFD analysis, this CAD part is done by somebody else. Okay. You get the solid model in your hand. Okay. So solid model, the moment you get, you start preparing, means checking for if there are any problem with the geometry, if it is watertight geometry or not. Okay. And once you are done with, there is a repair tab here. And uh, uh, here you can construct anytime I can, uh, even the this geometry, let's say I want to make it something, I can pull it, right? I can still modify this unit. Okay, so let's go to, once you are sure about your, what you are gonna do, then you go for the prepare tab here, okay? In the prepare tab, what you have to do? Extract, volume extract. Now, you can do the volume extraction here, and also you can do the volume extraction in Fluent also, okay? And that I will show you in the meshing part, okay? But let me show on the, because uh, sometimes we need, we do here also, so you should know. So let's select volume extract, it's very simple. First thing is I want to extract the fluid volume, so I select this. Now, read all these information here. It said, select the faces that encloses the region. What does it mean? That may select the faces which can enclose or make, which can make the geometry a water touch. Okay, so you know where are the openings? This face, if I let's say make a some wall, enclose it, yeah. very simple way, I mean, okay? Yeah. Then what are others? If I close this face, if I select this face, so if bottom is closed. If let's say flow comes from these three and it's pouring there, bottom is closed, but it can go from the side. Yeah. So I close here and I close here. Okay. Yeah. Now, still I see that I, I don't have a green check. That means I need to do something else also, right? So it always asks, select the seed phase. So what any internal phase can be a seed phase. What it does internally, it starts from that phase and try to go in whole model and try to check if there is any leakages or not. Okay, so you can put a, I'll come to you. If you can put a, let's say a, a something water is coming out from that, you know, and then water start filling and trying to grow and fill the whole volume and see if there is any leakage or not. Yes. It's not a wetted surface or something. Yes, exactly. It's a wetted surface. So let's select a, any seed surface. Okay. The moment I select seed, green check is on. Now I can hit and go and create this. How many steps we did? First, hit the extract fluid volume, then select the capping surfaces. Third, select the seed surface. Green check is on in three steps, okay? Yeah. I want to make it simple. Yeah. Now, before I hit green check, I want to make sure whether it is really watertight or not. Okay, how we can do that? There is an option here. Preview inside faces. Okay. So if I select this, so it will start filling. And I can see that. Let me just use this slider. So what this slider does, okay, 
If I start going, it will start from that phase. That means if red color is inside, the geometry is watertight. And I can go and hit the, ready to hit this, okay? Fluid volume is extracted. So now you will see extra volume got created, right? And if I switch up the solid part, this is my fluid volume. That's the gas volume, right? Now, any CFD analyst, if you are not doing conjugate heat transfer problem, what is conjugate heat transfer? Anybody? A simple fluid mechanics question. I'm checking if you're not sleeping, that's it. <laughs> Conjugate heat transfer means when you are solving a flow and temperature in the solid also. Okay, so let's say flow is happening through the pipe and pipe has a thickness and you want to solve both temperature in solid and temperature in flow and flow also. Okay, so it's a Conjugate. conduction in solid also. Okay. Heat transfer flow. Yeah. So this is your gas volume. And now the same operation which you learned. Here, let's say somebody, oh, no, these are the outlets, let's say. Or somebody say, no, these outlets need to be actually a little bit extended. What we will do here? Pull. And do I go here and say such, where is the pull button? No, just hit the P in your keyboard. Pull option is on, I'm faster, and then I can pull it. Now, P, P, Paris, yeah. okay? So anything you can do. Another thing is that, let's say, I don't like these uh, fillets. I don't like these fillets, okay? Now, if you go do, I'm, am I going to select all these fillets every time? No, I can use some of the power selection tool here because the geometry is not going to simple. This is very simple geometry. So it's selected in one shot all the fillets. And if I want to remove, what should I do? Delete. Delete. Or you can go here in design and say fill. Both are same. I can hit that. Hmm? Yeah. So if you select one phase, yes. okay, remember this thing. When you are doing one click, it selects the phase. Uh -huh. If you do, a, let's say, a double click, so once one click, that phase. If I do a double click, it selects the loop. Okay. So it, so it selected all connected loop. Now I know that there are many such things. So I can go to here under selection and it gives you a lot of options that all rounds in between zero and three mm. Okay. All rounds equal to three mm. Okay. Coaxial phases. So you can select any. So let's say if I select this, it selected all this. <laughs> And if I go and say fill, those corners are gone. I can also get rid of these and say fill, gone. Do I need this or I don't need it? Do I need those fillets? Yeah. Maybe because of the solid, uh, remember the solid. Yeah, come again, somebody. Uh, uh, they are part of the solid. I, mean, I was I was looking at that and uh, felt like there going to be some interference if I remove the fillets here. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> They are required for the mesh 
yeah, we will increase more elements to solve the problem. We exactly. We have a very good solution in short time, and it's almost the same values as the end. I think that in this case, it's not necessary if we want a quick solution, we can delay that edges because that edges increase the number of the elements of my microphone. Bang on. That's the that's the answer. It you need to see. How much, what is your fluid volume? 1,000 cubic meter. And how much fluid uh, uh, overall you are reducing? You know, we are all engineers. Mm -hmm. If you keep maybe some fillets, maybe it may create a problem in the machine. When we go, a lot of elements it can put in the curvature mm -hmm. because it has to resolve the curvature. Do you require that? In some cases we require, we cannot get rid of them, okay? but. So take your judgment that how, whether you want to keep them, whether they are going to affect your free, uh, flow analysis and how much they are going to affect. If they are not affecting your flow analysis, make it simple, okay? But if they are affecting, you cannot get rid of them. And in, 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 in that case, you have to make sure that the moment you generate the mesh, the mesh should have a good quality over there, okay? And we will see that very quickly. So this is clear, okay? I want to bring another geometry. So let's say what happened, this CAD model, you got it from somebody, your colleague or other team. And the, he or she is saying, yeah, I gave you the wrong one, yeah? And you spend whole time to extract the fluid volume, but there is a minor change. What she is saying, it's a minor change. And what that minor change is that instead of this face like this, it's little bit, let me change it. Okay, that's the change. And if I look at the volume, both are not much. Okay, what you simply need to do is go here, to that volume and say, update volume as created. Okay, no need to repeat everything. Okay, so you get your fluid volume adjusted. Okay, very quickly. Now let's take another example. But, but if the difference is big, we can do that. Then you go and uh, shout on them. <laughs> Why you didn't give me correct one? Yes, you are right. But then if you spend one one day on that. Yeah. Say, oh, yeah. <laughs> can, can you do the opposite? So if you change something with the volume? No, change? because volume is created by the solid. It's like this thing. But why you want it? Well, what is the reason? That's yeah. Yes, that's not because solid is the one get manufactured and comes right accordingly. You think that what should be the other way? It's not going to. So that's why it's not there. Okay. So ready for another example? Yes, yeah. The way you updated the model, just in case if there is another. Inlet on the top. Initially, there were only three inlets, right? So instead of that, there is another additional inlet. Even if in that scenario, if I give an update, will it function or will it not? It will not. So then I because have there is a change in yeah. the, the volume and size because you have not created the cavity surface for that. So it will not. So you need to do it, okay? And it's a big change. If there were three inlet and now say, oh, I forgot to add one. Uh -huh. a big change. Uh, means yeah, that you need to go back and say that. Totally different. Hey, guys, don't generate the waste. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like topology change. Yes, topology change altogether. So topology change. So let's look at the last example, okay? And I'm I, why I'm showing this is good one. And it will give you the... Okay, so you know that you can drag and drop. I'm showing a few things. So I'm dragging and dropping a any CAD model, okay? You don't need to go and open file and all. Drag and drop, okay? Looks interesting. You have to extract the gas volume. 
So first thing is that if I got the geometry and I have to do a CFD analysis, I need to understand how the flow may happen inside it, right? Right. Understand the geometry. Where are the openings or what happening? So the best way is you learn section view, right? There are two views. Mm. And section mode, right? So I'll tell you the shortcut. So anytime you can go here in the sorry guys, I've I've been out of section view here, or mm. you can simply select the axis okay. and X. X. Okay. The letter X. Okay. Little X in your keyboard. Okay. So this gives the view in X. If you select Y, it will cut in Y. If you select G, it will cut in G. Okay. Shortcut. Now, many people actually were asking, where are these four icons? Where are those four icons? You know, <laughs> it was haunting you guys a lot, right? These four icons. These four icons will appear when you are in the uh, section mode or in the sketch mode, right? So another thing is, you see here plan view, very useful. I don't want to rotate and try to see how it look like. Rather I use this and check this. I can make it more presentable to you. How? I can go to the display and then there are so many things here. So sketch grid, faded scene. I switched off and now my geometry looks like this. And if I, so now I can see the where I'm cutting and full geometry, but I can utilize some of these options to make it more visible to me. Okay, so you can analyze your geometry in the section mode. Okay, so let's do that. So obviously, I don't know from where the flow is coming. Assume flow is entering from here. Okay, so flow is entering, then flow goes, following me? Yeah, yeah? yeah. it goes from this uh, place, okay. and then this is all closed. So it goes here and here, here. And then flow goes, let's say here, but it is closed. No, cannot go. So let's try here. It goes this side and also it goes this side. Overall understood where the flow is going. Okay, let's go to the 3D mode. And apply the same three steps we learned in the class. Go to the prepare, go to the volume extract, Select the capping surfaces. So I said, this is the one. Uh -huh. Close it, right? Where is the other one? Should I have hold control while doing this? No, you here you don't need a control. You can simply do a left click mouse button without even hit, uh, pressing the control. Okay. And then the third one is here. Okay. So what we need, what was the second seed surface? Okay, so let's select any seed surface, anything inside, I don't care. This is on, I don't want to take the, I want to make sure that, this is on. The seed seed selection. Yeah, this is a little bit got my, yeah. So this option I was searching, okay? Preview, inside faces. Let's look at what happens. You see the problem? Leakage, everything is red. That means I missed some surface and I have to go and close that where is the leakage? I, I checked the geometry, but still there is a leakage somewhere. So I can use this slider, okay? And try to slide this and try to see still it is there inside. Somewhere it's coming out. 
Here it is inside, but here somewhere coming out. Okay. So Okay, so that the tiny one is our. So you don't have to do anything. Select that surface. Just no, no control key, nothing. I'm just going and selecting that surface. Mm. This one. That's it. And now seed surface is there, but it's still I want to preview. Mm. Just to make sure nothing is going out. Okay. Once you are sure, just hit the and your volume got created. And let me show you the section view. Same principle. No, I saw my direction. No, I And then X. <clears throat> so your a blue part is your gas volume, mm -hmm. right? And if you want to see it in 3D mode, I'll just switch off the solid. And this is your fluid volume where you will perform CFD analysis. Clear? Same way you can do in messy modes. In Zoom also you can do the same. Okay, so. How looks like, okay? Yes. Okay. Last thing now. All these are, by the way, what type of flow I'm doing right now? Internal. There's no external flow. Okay. So let's do one external. And that is much more easier than this. Okay. So I'm adding a new design. Mm. And I'm bringing the, one of the, the CAD file. CAD file maybe. And it says cooling block. And I'm, I'm also telling you guys a little bit about the physics right now when I'm saying. So what this cooling means? Now, many people get confused in terms of whether shall I model the cooling fluid in, or the hot fluid which is flowing inside it. But my interest is how much cooling is happening externally, right? Heat transfer. So if you know the heat flux, right? Something you need to know how much heat flux, then you can specify the boundary condition on the surface of this, these walls, and then you do only the external flow analysis. Okay. And that's, a, so if you want to do the external flow around this, prepare tab instead of volume extract, say in closer. Okay. Same, you can read it. Select one or more bodies because you have a multiple bodies here. You, you know the selection process, how things get selected. If you do or left to right, okay, whatever comes inside the box gets selected. Okay, so if I say like this much, nothing came. Okay, but if I say from right to left, whatever it touches, it selects. This way you can a lot of, let's say there are thousands of tubes and you want to select the surface of the tubes, only the inlets. You're not going to select one by one only. That's where these are very useful. Or you can utilize power selection. I select one surface, equal radius select all. Okay. Now let's say I want to select this pool, then it gets selected. So these are the left to right right to left. If it is touches, then it selects only the part which it touches. Okay. Clear this? Yeah. Hmm? 
the left to right is the ball from there. No, it doesn't matter. Okay. So even if you go from left to right, if it is not enclosing the full body, then it will select the still the surfaces. You see how many 29 faces got selected. But if you still I go and try to enclose that, it will select two bodies and 24 faces. Okay, but if I have to select, let's say, this body completely, then you know, I will not, otherwise both will get selected, okay. but I can select this. So it is inside. Okay, so selection, just want you to tell how the selection works. So selected, so same way you, we go for enclosure. Enclosure, select the bodies, selected. It created a box around it. It created a box around it. Okay, what is that box? The flow is happening around this body. Are you able to, if you have any confusion, just let me know. Because if we don't clarify this right now, later on you won't be able to appreciate what we say. Okay. Next, can, we, can we change the shape of the box like a yeah, cylinder? Yeah. Yes, I'm coming to that. Okay, now I can do a lot of things. Now this box is not aligned. Maybe I can, I want to align this box, you know, set orientation, custom shape. So let's say I want to set the orientation of this box along this edge or along this edge. So now it is aligned, okay? Now I can change the uh, all these dimensions. So let's say I go 100, then I can use the tab here to go from one to one, other one, 100, again the tab. So I can, you'll see, I can go from one to another. And then I can hold the... Uh... I can hold the dimension by the space bar, right? At the beginning, the very, the very, the very first dimension by the, the space bar. And then no, tabs. There is, it appears automatically, so there is no need to press the space bar. Okay. It will remain there until unless I hit the green check button here. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you can change the dimensions by using the tab. Let's say if I use, let's say 100 here. You see, I can change the box. Now it can be a box, it can be any other shape. By the way, if I don't want, right now it is a symmetric dimension. What do you mean by symmetric dimension? You specify one, then other gets, okay? But if you want all six, you want to specify, just switch off this option and you can specify everything, okay? So symmetric is right. Now you can have a cylindrical, you can have a sphere, or you can create your own custom shape also, okay? So sphere, let's say I want default cushion area 20, I can say 80% or you change the, the dimension also, up to you, okay? So let's select the box and let's align it to the, this one and say green check. Hmm. Okay, so enclosure got created. These were our solid volume, and this is enclosure. But if you take a cut plane or any, uh, let's say I take a section mode, it's fine. So there is nothing inside, right? Under understand, right? This part, there is nothing inside. So what, how we will do the analysis now? We have an inlet flow coming in, outlet, and then you have a heated walls, mm. right? So yes. you might be interested, what kind of, uh, let's say this room, right? So there is AC in intake and AC 
outlet, right? So what should be the power so that it can be cooled? But what are the heat generation here? CPUs, right? So similar here, you will have this coil, which is generating a heat. So you will see nice temperature, how it is getting diffused, how the temp it is cooling the, the uh, taking away the heat from the from the, the tubes, how it will take to the convection, right? Heat transfer coefficient. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Any question before I now move to the meshing? Another good topic. The limit or size of this uh, outer enclosure will have any impact on the properties of convection or, or is it just a unit volume? Okay, a good question. What should be the size of the external volume, external uh, shape, because it's infinite. So I can go and create whatever. So what should be the size, you know? So there won't be, if you are taking a very small uh, box, right? That means um, you may have an impact on the solution accuracy, okay? So there are some rules which you can apply. So if let's say the, uh, the body is, uh, let's say D or diameter of D, right? So you should take the inlet or we call it upstream. So imagine this is a, this is a bottle and the flow is happening like this. Okay, so if flow is happening, I can take the inlet here or I can take the inlet here. Okay, so which one is right, which one is wrong? If the inlet is very close, flow will not get to develop before it hit the, the obstacle. So you need to allow a flow, keep this dis, uh, that boundary away from, from the, the obstacle. But a lot of actions are happening in the downstream, right? So this boundary outlet should be far away. And this we will discuss tomorrow in more detail. So just if I, I know there will be many questions and I will show you exactly how big or what thumb rule you can apply at least, okay? So yes, uh, it, if it is very close to the, the body, it may impact the solution, okay? Um, so you need to have enough outer or enclosure in order to have a correct CFD solution. And we will discuss more in detail tomorrow. Any other question? Yes. So, um, the uh, uh, what do you mean by custom shape? Yeah, it's been a little bit safer layer on the whole component with the same whole component. Yeah, but what do you mean by thicker layer? Thick, oh, no, no, either shell, with the shell of the of the components, just a little bit thicker layer. I think it means by limiting the thickness of the human component. Suppose a supplier gives you a component. Mm -hmm. But then you want to increase the thickness. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, but you want to increase the dimension, the thickness of the whole component by a certain amount, let's say by 10 mm or 15 mm of the existing one. Is this possible? Is that the question? Is that the question? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's similar. For example, people don't make a coating on, on the components. So, how we can make a coating? Okay, so first thing, if you are applying the coating to the pipe, are you going to model it? No, I, I'm saying now we are the ball, but we make another. Now we must say like about the thing where there's a thing that's for the thumbs are talking about. So it's the same thing about the thickness of the object, the size of the flow. I think this is possible. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so what do you mean by the thumb rule? Yeah, thumb rule. Yeah, thumb rule. Yeah, I will make a larger layer on the top of the 
You want to talk about the bombing? Not really. Yeah. No. Okay. Let's do one thing. Okay. I'll, I'll discuss with you offline. Okay. And we can clarify. Is it something kind of flavor and liquid seed that you don't want? Okay. What time you have to so we need a break before we go to the other one. Yes, sir. This will have a complicated Generate the half and then cut it the section and then mark it. Okay. Many times in real geometry, you can make it. So that's a good question. The real life is not that easy, as I showed you. Huh? <laughs> so you go back, take your geometry, and as I told, in three steps it can be done, and it's not. Okay, so <laughs> it's just to show you the concept. Okay, so want to take a break? And up to what time you guys have energy? Because if you are, you don't have energy, then uh, what time we are today? Till four fifteen. That's the schedule. But again, we can go up and down. Okay. Yeah. 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 Can you let us read? So want to take break now or you want to continue 15 minute break and then come with fresh mind and start meshing. Perfect. Can I start uh, How do you adjust after you click the, the thing? So confirm the shape. How do you make the angle? Uh, how do you uh, make changes to the shape? Of the, uh, the angle to I think. Uh, I mean, I try. I want. I, I want to change to to, to the cylinder. Yeah, let me check. Let me check. I'm I'm not a CFD guy actually. So I will try to see if I can answer. Oh, over here. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 
So you will be providing those, I mean, aside from downloading the stuff from the internet, from the website, you will be providing. So these materials? Yeah, yeah, that will be provided. Yes. So is it not available in the material? It is available, but, uh -huh. but uh, in case we finish uh -huh. the course, so then you want to. So you can download it directly from the. So it will remain yeah, there. it will remain there itself. Okay. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah. You can hear. <laughs> Yeah, the priority is perfect. All right. Start. Okay, so let me set the let me set the expectation that I'm going to do this workshop. And why I'm going to do that? Now I'm telling you the things in bit and pieces. Now I want to make a story. No, I'm not going to tell you any story, okay? I'm going to make a story around simulation, okay? And try to, then you understand the complete story and then you see where the geometry fits in that story, where the missing fit in that story, okay? So I'm trying to give you the full picture right now. Even though you have not covered missing and you have not covered solver part okay so very quickly there will be a lot of questions those will get answered tomorrow okay so just hold on on those questions okay rather look at the bird eye view how it start with the geometry go to the machine go to the solver and set up and visualize the results okay and i will take the same geometry which is you have done Mixing tea. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to. Why I'm showing it again to make to tell you the story. Plus, to tell you that you can do everything inside the fluent. You can import the CAD model inside the fluent. You can do the machine inside the fluent. If many of you, I think, uh, have used a CFD before, and then there was an ANSYS machine. Okay. Since then, ANSYS has been trying to give the user experience, which is unified the, workflow. The screen is, is frozen. Pardon? Yeah. Green is. Um, is a question for me, or it was just. Uh, if no questions, please mute yourself. Uh, screen is frozen. But I'm not even moving the screen. So let me move it for you. <laughs> Now I moved it. <laughs> Did it move? Works perfectly fine. Okay. So there is a screen here. If you can do all the things inside, why we why we work with it? Note it down. Ask me tomorrow morning. Okay. Or other, I'll remember this question because it will get answered. Okay. You can hold, right? Or you need answer right now. No, because I'll if I give the answer tomorrow, it will make more sense and you will remember it. Okay. So, right. so everybody knows this. Uh, so mixing tea, what it does, it mix do things, right? So we are going to see simple. There is a one air stream coming at 25 degrees Celsius from other side, 55 degrees Celsius. How is the mixing happening? Very simple, nothing to think much, okay? 
And this is the problem. So air is coming at three meter per second at 25 degrees Celsius from the, the bigger one. And then from here, it is coming five meter per second, 50 degrees Celsius. Remember these numbers, I will ask you. Okay, I don't want to go back and slide, okay? And then outlet is a open to atmosphere, zero gauge pressure, okay? These are the boundaries. So if you want, you can go a lot here. I'm not going to do that. So let's start a fluent in standalone mode. So fluent can be started in two ways, either in standalone mode, or you can also launch fluent through the workbench which I will show you tomorrow, okay? Right now, the idea is to show you the high level view. So the moment you open Fluent, this is called launcher, Fluent launcher, okay? Fluent launcher have these different tabs. You can do the messing or you can open into the solution mode, okay? Messing and solution mode. What we are going to do today is meshing mode, okay? And these options here, if you see, and in your case, I think all of you here have a previous version. This is a one version older, 2021 R2. So you may not see a capability level and okay, so that's fine. Idea is not to open Fluent right now. Please do not, okay? Focus on the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I ask, then you do it. You will learn more. So these are the, the licenses, don't have to. Um, from here, you can select, we will discuss what these case file, mess file and all. But just to give you the idea, the case file means it saves the mess information and the boundary conditions information, solver setup and everything. It is saved under the case file, okay? This file is simple mesh file, okay? It contains only the mesh. Without, without the any solver or boundary conditions. Mesh is just a mesh, okay? But case file saves everything except the solution data, okay? So now if you want solution data, then you will have a case and data file, okay? So... Yeah, so a single file including case and data or no, it will have a two files. Okay. One is case file, okay. one will have a data okay. file associated with the case. So you cannot read data without case. Okay. When, when, I, when I should, for example, load case and data, I will I will upload only the case file because that file is associated with the data. No, or there is the no other? data inside the case. So I'm saying very simple way. Right now, as a beginner, remember three files. Mesh file, which contains the mesh. Yes. Okay. Then you have a case file, which contains the mesh and your settings. Okay. And third one is the data file. Once you run the solution, so it contains the results. So data file contains the results. Yes. So let's say if you want me to, if you want to share the, the case with me and say, hey, Ajay, can you look at my results? Maybe I'm sending you the case file, but where are the results? You need to send the data file. So I can check your case, but I cannot check that. Uh... <coughs> okay. So if you get only the results file, can you check it? No. So you will need all the things. I need case and data case. file, not three files. Because case file has a machine for Okay. All these things will get clarified. Okay. Tomorrow we will be much more fast. Okay. So be prepared, have energy drinks and, and come here. Okay. A parallel because I'm just missing processes. You can run in parallel, right? So you can specify the number of missing processes either in SMP mode or you can also go and distribute in parallel. I'm not going right now in detail. My idea is not that, but just jump in. So what I'm going to use, remember, if you purchase, let's say one CFD license, 
you can run on four cores. Okay. And whatever I'm four cores, no, no need of any additional HPC license. So you can utilize four cores of your computer or laptop. Okay, without, but if you want to run on six core, then you need a HPC license other than the CFD license. Okay. So let's take only four and meshing also can be done in parallel. That's why you see here a meshing processes and solver processes. Okay, so meshing also can be done in parallel. So the meshing only includes the CPU and not the GPU. No, there is no GPU. For the meshing, I, I won't use the GPU, only the CPU. There are some, um, I will again, uh, don't want to see this. You can act, do the some type of acceleration using the GPU. But in upcoming version, there will be a GPU solver itself, which is based on the GPUs. Okay. And that is available in current version as a beta feature. And that is much more faster because I think Ru can come in tomorrow. One GPU versus CPU, how many core versus. So the ANSYS has released a GPU solver also, but not with full capabilities. This is the only GPU accelerator, which you get little bit acceleration. So let's, all right. So, so I start with the start. So when I start, it will open the fluent in meshing mode. Okay. I'm not going to, uh, there is a lot of things here. Let's, uh, what I'm going to say here is just look at select workflow. So I say water tight geometry workflow, which is already defined. The good thing about the fluent meshing is that even if you have, if you don't know anything about the meshing, you can generate the mesh. It's that user friendly. Okay. So let's try that. What is the first one it says? So what should we do? Import the geometry. So I go to here and say, where is my file? Select the any CAD file here, either. So space claim file, same and say, okay. Okay, so what it will import the geometry and display it. Close other files here. Okay, so this is the geometry. Now you can make it uh, that I'll show you through one, but I'm just okay. So geometry is there. Add a local sizing. I'm taking it as a default. I'm not doing anything. So I say, no, I don't want update. Generate the surface mesh. It automatically calculated the size of the mesh based on the curvature in the geometry. Okay, I'm trying to show you that how much I'm changing. I'm not changing anything. And I say, generate the surface mesh. I'm just trying to show you. I'm not doing anything. Surface mesh is there. Okay. What is the next one? Describe your geometry. I'm not doing anything so far. Okay. So describe means tell about your geometry. So first option is geometry consists of only solid regions. Yes. There was some red blocks before. What are the Again, I'll come back today. No, no. Okay. So, right now, look at the very high level view. Okay, the path. Okay. Okay. So, describe your geometry. Okay. So, it says geometry consists of only solid. So, what it was? Solid model. Okay. So, I'm not changing anything. Would will you cap opening and extract fluid reason? Yes, yeah, you can answer. It's the user friendliness, right? So yes, it's already selected. Okay. 
change all fluid fluid boundary type from wall to internal how many fluid regions will be there inside one so one fluid yeah connected everything so there is no fluid fluid there are no two fluid regions right so no need do you need shear topology where you need shear topology you have covered shear topology um anybody know about the shear topology i think this is where the geometry can can interfere with the uh, if i created any uh, uh, like um, extra geometry and then something like interaction and i have to move any uh, interference between the geometry and the created surfaces so it doesn't uh, jeopardize the solution is it uh, that way yes you are absolutely right and I'll just show you to these guys. So let's say if you have a, a part, one geometry, and let's say this is a not the pipe, let's take a, so this is a one body, okay? A flow is going from here, okay? But I have another body here. Yeah, I think, I think we're, we're not seeing the screen, for some reason, we're not seeing the screen where you're explaining. Now, I'm, I'm just, I think you're explaining. I don't know whether you can see us or not. Uh, no, no, <laughs> we cannot. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a simple thing. I'll... You know already, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was one of the practice in the, uh, the, in the space claim. Yeah, okay. Okay, so... Okay. All right. What is the use of use of Microsoft Wi-Fi? So can you see this two bodies? Mm -hmm. So imagine these are two bodies, okay? Now I think you guys can see. Yes. So body one and body two. Now, if I take these two bodies here, okay? So these are two different bodies. And if I bring them together at the junction here, how many faces will be there? If the both geometries are not connected. Okay. Mm. In meantime, I will, I will open. So, if flow is happening from this side, and if these are not connected, then flow will not go or cross. So this is inlet, this is outlet. Now, if these two bodies are not connected, then flow will not pass from blue to the orange one because there is a disconnection, okay? So shear topology in space claim, you can tell the, that body one, body two are connected. So what it will do, it will remove the duplicate phase between them and try to connect. And now if you do the analysis, then flow will pass through that. Otherwise it will act as a wall. So flow will come and turn. Okay, so that's the shear topology. Okay, here it is. Let's say I take this box here. All right, and then go to the and let me make it two bodies. How many bodies are there? One and two. 
okay and let's say the flow is happening from this phase to this phase now at the junction there will be two phases if you mesh it it will be disconnected so what you need to do is go to the the workbench here and there is an option called share okay so this share it will identify where the connection should be there you see here that is the connection otherwise how many faces were there one face is this and then another face would be uh, the circular one big face and circular one so they are not connected but the moment you say share topology it identifies where the connection is and it will change the the color also now if you take this geometry to the meshing the mesh will be connected clear mm -hmm. so that's shear topology now coming back to our model so do we need here shear topology there are two bodies no so that's fine said so that's my geometry now it understood in closed fluid reason what it was we have to create a capping surface because we have to extract the fluid volume mm -hmm. which i am doing here not into the space plane i can do that also there so how to create a cup okay so one thing um, in in your version what you have guys right now um right now you see this is only one zone here okay and even if i select the zone it's selecting the whole thing so when i was importing generating the surface mesh i can let me just do it very quickly i need to just switch on this option which you don't have to do and do the same thing so describe the geometry no problem same now i have the different regions here and i will create the capping surface same way so what are the capping surface here here and here yeah correct so let's create it. so let's say this is our inlet so first select either you can select from here you see here you can go but if you have a geometry you can do a right click on the zones okay you can also select so let's right now i'm i'm going to select this one and say this is my bigger inlet large there are two inlets right small and large so you can give the name up to you and this is velocity inlet i don't need to change anything okay and this could be a label also and create a cap Okay, there was some. So the moment I create a cap, what it does? Close it. Okay, same way we go for the this one. Okay, and again this is your inlet. Small. Small. Why I am putting inlet first? Because the moment I take it to the fluent, fluent will apply the boundary condition as inlet. So it makes your life easy. Okay, that's it. Inlet small. Let it be velocity inlet. And say create caps. Okay, so it is also closed. Now, what is the remaining here? Yeah. The outlet. Yeah. So you go here and say this is outlet, but it is not an inlet. So I will change the type to pressor outlet and say create the caps. That. It identify the number of fluid regions. How many are there? I think one, right? So let's go ahead and say create a region. So it has created 
the fluid region and you put the solid as the dead. But if you are doing a conjugate heat transfer problem, you need both. So right now it will not, it will not create the mess in the solid. It will create the mess in the fluid region. So if you are doing only fluid flow analysis, you don't need a solid, then why to mesh it? Okay. So, but anytime you want to change it, you can change it back to the solid. And you can say, this is my, you can rename it solid. This is fluid. Okay. And uh, solid, I don't want. So I can say dead. Okay. Okay. Now you can draw also that we will see later on. Right now, update. Mm -hmm. There is a, a little bit of lag, few seconds lag, lag between the screens. <laughs> yeah, because I think there was some internet connection mm. issue. Mm. Uh, is it okay now? Because I'm in the. Yeah, what you are saying. We, boundary we... layers. Yes. Mm. Okay, I'll I'll make sure that I go slow. Why we need a boundary layer? Why we need a boundary layer? No, that's a boundary condition. Velocity. So if you look at near the wall, it's a fluid mechanics, you know, near the wall, what happened? Velocity. Near the wall, what happens? Your velocity, right? So here the gradients are very high. What is the gradient? Del Y by del X. Right? Okay. So if your gradients are very high, that means you need a, a finer mess near to the wall to resolve the change in the flow, right? If you keep uh, your mess size very, so, so here what we do is we create a boundary layer. In CFD, there is a concept. You can create a layer of cells which are aligned as for the flow and make sure that Resolve the boundary layer, and we will see that. So right now I'm not changing anything. Add a boundary layer, done, and say generate mesh. And mesh is done. This is the mesh. And if you go near to that, you see, it has created poly prism, right? Inside it is a polyhedra mesh. But these are the polyprism. What is polyprism? Poly is a surface, extrude it. It's a polyprism, right? Right. So once the mesh is ready, you can save this mesh if you want, and that we will cover more. So I'm not, so I'm going to switch to the solution because my mesh is ready. One question. Can you go back to the boundary layer again? Click on the boundary layer. That we will cover. Right now, let's not focus on the details. Let's focus on the flow. Okay. Not the flow. Flow of the. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this mess is ready. So here you see the button. Switch to solution. You can directly go to the solution. Uh, solve. Yes, uh, solve. And do you remember what was the boundary conditions? Yes. Five, two. From bigger one, three and twenty-five, five, and from five fifty. Okay. So let's do that. I don't want. What you need to do is this is a fluent window. First, many of you might be seeing first time. I don't know. Okay. So you can see here, there are various tabs. Okay. 
the simple rule is if you want to set up a problem and you are a beginner, go from left to right. Okay. And you, we will do exactly the way I said. So from left to right, first thing I want to display the mesh. So you see, you can display button here. Yeah. And that the same, there are some usefulness or useful button here also. You can utilize, so I can display the mesh here and say display. Yes. Now I can click. So this is the my, my. Okay. This is the mesh. Now there are various things. So it tells you this is inlet, this is inlet, this is outlet. Okay. So let's, so I'm not going, you can check a lot of things here. What is the, the size of the mesh? You can check the unit. What do we unit we need? Degree Celsius. 55 and 25 degrees yeah. Celsius, right? Yeah. By default, the units are in uh, here, not in Celsius. Yeah. So you can you can go here and say, I want to change the temperature one. So this is the temperature. Kelvin. Yeah. So it is Kelvin by default, select C, so close. Okay. Minimum change. Okay. You can check the mesh. You can check the quality. You can do a lot of things, but I'm not going. So the domain, I don't have to do anything. Rest, we will see. Let's go to the physics. Physics again, do we need energy? Yes, yeah. sure. Yes, sure. So switch on yeah. the energy. Rest of the things here, I don't need because these are models, which radiation model, multi-phase models, which are not required right now for such material. Let's check what material it was, air. Okay, so by default, influence the material is air. Okay, so don't change anything. Then we go to the cell zone. There is nothing to apply into the cell zone, and we will see tomorrow that what is cell zone, what is a boundary zone. Let's apply the two boundary conditions which we have seen. What was that? Three meter per second, 25 degrees Celsius at the large one. So I select the boundary and say edit, simple select this and say edit. And it asked me the boundary, what was this? Three meter? Three meter. Thermal no. was 25, Perfect. apply. Then I do the for a small inlet. Sorry. 555. Huh? So five and 55, apply, close. At the outlet, by default, fluent puts zero gauge pressure. Yes, so don't need to do anything. We are ready. We are again going from left to right. So this is done. Go to the user defined. There is nothing to do in users. Go to the solution. Let's monitor few things. Why we monitor few things? Because if convergence is very important, a solution is converged that means the errors in the solutions are minimal. How will you make sure that your solution is final, which you are showing to your customer, right? So there are certain criteria through which you can say that this CFD solution is the final one. Those criteria, again, we will discuss later on, okay? So to have that criteria, I'm going to monitor certain quantity inside my domain, which certain quantities can be velocity, pressure, or any other quantity. If that quantity is changing, that means my solution is not final. If it is changing, not final. It should stop changing because it's a steady state solution I'm running. Okay, so let's monitor the uniformity index of temperature at the outlet. Because two streams are coming, I want to see how uniform it get mixed. Okay. So go to the surface report here, and there is a uniformity index. You can name it. I'm not interested right now. You can give the name of the report. The report type already selected. Field variable is a temperature. Add the outlet. I can write into the file 
I can write and plot it. That's it. So this plot is done. Again, I go from left to right. You need, because these are the numerical solution, you need to initialize. Okay, so I initialize it. Don't worry about what I'm doing right now. And then give the here 200 iterations to run it. Calculate. So this is the uniformity index at the outlet. These are the, you can say the errors in the solution which are going down. It's not Hmm? Yeah, it's not laminar. By default, fluent run turbulent. Okay. okay, but you have to calculate the Reynolds number. Mm -hmm. How to calculate that we will see. Later. So you see here, solution is not, not changing. Even if you're running, it is converged. Okay. So we can say few things. Mass conservation equation. Remember, I said mass should be conserved. So let's check that under the results. Fluxes, mass flow rate, inlet, inlet, outlet. Sorry, can you show again this? How did you get the inlet? This one? Yes. Okay, so we were into the solution and running. Again, yes. you move uh, to the uh, results. Okay. Yeah. And under the results, there is a report section. Okay, okay. Report section. okay. okay. So I'm checking here report, okay. mass flow rate, select all the boundaries and say compute. So positive value means coming in. Negative value means going out. So it should be almost negligible. Zero means negligible as compared to the, the, the value which are there. Okay. So don't worry. I'm getting one E minus eight. It's not zero, but Ajay, you said it should be zero. I'm saying it should be negligible, right? If I take one E key power six number and I give you that error is one, it's negligible as compared to one E key power six. Pardon? This is kg per second. Okay. So this way, now let's create some visualization. So I go to the here, I'll show you how I want to see the temperature. I can select all of the surfaces and done. Okay. So this is um, 25 degrees Celsius. From here, 55 is coming, and this is how it is getting mixed at the outlet. Okay? okay. There are various ways you can post process. I can create a plane if I want. Have a section view. Yes. Section view. Now, there are many ways you can do that. Uh, this plane view. Okay. I can have a plane this one and say create the plane. I can display everything on that plane. So this is how the temperature. Are we in the steady state? Yeah? This is a steady state solution. Okay. You can change the variable. Let's say velocity. You can change the range. So six meter per second. You can specify maximum. So there are various ways. So what? Don't worry about what it is. Okay. What do you saw? Started with the geometry. We made split the machine. Then we did some setup. And we ended up with the solution. And we post process. So in CFD word, we call it pre-processing. Okay. Solution or setup and then post process. Okay. So pre-processing solution and post processing pre processing is up to geometry preparation meshing and doing the setup then you go to the solution once the solution is done we call it post processing where you extract a lot of data you create a plot you create animations let's say if i want to create something 
Um, there are various ways of, let's say, I want to release a pipeline from inlet or from this one. Right? So there are various ways to, to do the things. Mm -hmm. So I can have it, how it get mixed, or I can have a continuous. So there are various ways you can look at the solution. Okay. So far, so good. Because yeah. we still not enter to the main thing. If this isn't the main thing. I wanted to set the the platform so that you understand the gravity, what it is, you know, because we jump into the simulation without understanding. <laughs> okay. So that's why I took a lot of time to set up the background um, and then teaching you the tool. Anybody can just sit and follow and do it. Okay. But <clears throat> so this solution came, uh, I mean, at a start. Uh, when you uh, take the mission, uh, you you enter the core uh, core process uh, process, right? So so you assign four cores for the solution. Right? So it has distributed the mesh. It has divided into the four. Yeah. Hey, you solve this much. You solve this yeah. much. You solve this much. You solve this much. Yeah. And then it collects and this, so it becomes faster. And that's where third day you will see on Shaheen. You can use as many as core, and then it gets distributed. Yeah. The, the more we, the cores we have, then what we have can affect uh, to the solution. What yeah, so it, it depends on size of the problem. If your problem size is very small, let's say I, you have 100 cells, yeah. okay? Yeah. And as you say, I'm going to run 100 cores. So what did they will even the communication time will increase drastically. You will not get any scale up. Yeah. But if you have a hundred million cells, right? Hundred core. So then it will distribute. Then you'll get the speed up. And why you need a HPC for a smaller problem? You don't need it. HPC is needed when you have complex digits, big model, you know. And in CFD, most of the time you will end up with a complex and more number of cell counts because you have a thermal boundary layer. You have a hydrodynamic boundary layer. Both needs to be resolved. Means more number of cells. Yeah. More number of cells means more computational cost. So, if you want to reduce the time, increase the number of cores. It's all connected. All good. Make sense? All good. So all ready to jump into the machine with this background? Yeah. 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 Let's look at some missing part and then uh, start fresh tomorrow. Okay. I don't want you to. And anytime you feel that, okay, let's end it. Better end. Yeah. I mean, uh, we are not. Maybe I have to convince Ru. Otherwise. <laughs> So okay to go ahead? Huh? Oh, yes, yes. So, uh, so, 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 but this, these sessions are recorded. Yes. So, let me get them out of the Yes. Meeting recorded? Yes. Sorry, 
Okay. So now most of the time, I'm going to instead of the slide mode, because then I think even I'm like, let's get into the to the example instead of going to the slide. So then we will also get the that how it works, you know, instead of telling you through the slides. But let's look at few slides before we take the example and show you. I hope this is a lecture and not missing it. Fine. So we are going to look at a fluent missing water tight geometry workflow, which you have already seen. Now it will be easy for me, right? What the workflow you saw was water tight geometry workflow. Okay. Because it gives you the workflow. Why we call it workflow? Because it gives you the step to follow, right? Yeah. Then what are the in supported file formats? What it supports? Then I will show you the, the workflow and through the demos all. I think the whole lecture I will cover through the demo. And we will have a lot of discussion, questions. Let's ask. Now you can ask. Okay. So why it is uh, um, I don't know, before fluent missing, people, anybody who was doing CFD, they were mesh, doing the mesh inside the ANSYS mesh. There was ANSYS mesh and it's still it's there, okay? Uh, fluent missing gives you various advantages. One is that you can do a parallel missing. ANSYS came up with the new meshing technology, which is called Mosaic mesh, which I will show you. So it's, it's called hex core, poly hex core mesh. Very fast, and it gives you the poly on the surface and hex mesh on the. Why we need hex mesh for CFD solution? Anybody? Do we need or we don't need? Or it is preferred is a hex mesh. What are the different type of mesh elements? Tetrahydrum. Tetra? Yes. Tetrahedral? Yeah. Hexahedral? Hexahedral. What else? Polyhedral. Poly? This is geometry question. Nothing to do with the simulation. <laughs> what are the different shapes you can? Prism. Right? And what do you have else? Pyramid. See? These are very easy. Nothing. Everything is. Okay? This is what you can get. Anything else? So you can. I'm not sure if you can. Yeah. So that picks up. Here. Okay, so these are the different type of cells you can generate. Now you understand cells, one control volume, right? Cells. So you can have a tetra, hexa, poly. Now, what you are doing is, again, connect back to our first slide. We have a governing equations. What was the governing equation? Your Navier-Stokes equation, yeah. right? Yeah. If I write simple, um, Del U by del T, let's say U del U by del X plus V del U by del Y and so on. So what are these? Ultimately, you are going to, and this is your cell. So you are calculating the fluxes. Okay. If you are interested in mathematics, so every phase has the vector normal, right? 
and if it is not aligned with the flow it will have a two component and it will be a source of error okay so let's say i have a tetrahedral element this phase the flow is not it may not it is not aligned at all yeah. right so it may have a some error okay yeah. but what about the prism or sorry the 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 hexahedral or friendly normal reduce the uh, reduce the error. so they are preferred yeah. okay but you cannot generate always hex mass mm -hmm. okay so when it is preferred that means where are the gradients more near the boundaries near the walls so you need to put the elements which are aligned in the flow direction and that you can have there either you will have a poly prism so you are saying this is a poly but i'm extruding it so face is a normal yeah. okay that's one thing or you will have a simple prism right simple prism again the face is normal okay so that's how boundary layer concept and these why we prefer hex mesh in the cfd analysis okay in practical when you deal with a lot of complex geometries you may need to decompose the geometry to create the hex mesh but if it takes a lot of time to create the hex mesh you know you may just say that no the time i need to create the hex mesh uh, and my project deadline is this no i cannot go ahead then you can go for the hybrid meshing so what fluent meshing does for you it automate all the process mm -hmm. it came up with the technology called poly hex core it will put the hex mesh in the core region and then it will have a poly on the surfaces and it will try to connect two type of a element what are those element poly and the hex how will you connect is the technology which is confidential to us okay now for for you as a beginner let's say if you have a tetrahedral mesh okay and you have a hexahedral mesh how will you connect don't worry this is geometry question tetrahedral element poly uh, sorry uh, hex mesh or hexahedral element how can you connect one point to the four four faces one point will go to the triangular mesh Mm -hmm. And four will connect to the so there will be a pyramid layer. Okay, so all these problems um, got simplified for you in the in the fluent machine. Why we need to struggle with the machines? Are we here to solve the problem or learn CFD? I mean, we are we are engineer. We need to solve the problem. Yes. Why should we worried about the mesh? Huh? think about it maybe after 20 years or 10 years not even 20 10 years no need for the mesh somebody was talking to me discovery yeah. do we need a mesh there no no it's right so it's like whenever you question a very obvious thing you get the solution right yeah. have you thought about taxi uh, uh like uber you see uber right uber doesn't own any taxi but they provide the taxi service can you think about taxi service without taxi they are doing it so why to worry about the mesh maybe in future some of you or anybody can come up with the solution because we are wasting time in mesh don't need our problem is there we need to solve the problem 
But as of now, don't get so excited. You need to do the machine. Okay. <laughs> so that's a futuristic, uh, maybe a 2050 vision or something. Okay. So, so that's where fluent missing comes into the picture. Okay. To make your life a little bit easier than earlier, where we used to struggle like anything. But now it's much more automated. Can handle billions of cells. I remember. There was like a news when ANSYS hits 1 billion cell limit, you know? Yeah. So it came in the paper, newspapers, you know? But now, what billion cells? We can handle it. Nothing, nothing new. You can script it. All this missing process, you can script it, submit it to the Shaheen and run in batch mode, okay? And if any of you, I don't know who is the, somebody is a very old, I accept the row fluent user. I started using uh, when 2001. So anybody, why I'm saying that fluent missing is nothing new. We had a call, a product called T grid back in that time. T grid was there, it was very powerful tool, but very limited to the expert user. It needs five. So they have utilized the, the power of P grid and then implemented many things which can make it very user friendly is the fluent. So just to give you the background. Okay. So still there are some controls. Still, if some expert wants to go for those type of uh, uh, controls, those are available. I'm just trying to give you the, that is still those controls, manual controls are there in fluent machine. Okay. And it gives you the, you start with a nice um, one single window. You start with the geometry, you mesh it, the user interface, uh, it guides you the, through the process. That's what it is. That means anybody, you will try actually, okay? And you will be able to at least get something. You'll get the mesh, okay? I have seen that where people used to struggle meshing like for many, many days. So it, it was like a huge task. So what you require is, now you understand watertight geometry? Yes. You can make it watertight by capping. I have shown you that. So I'm not going in much more detail. So it can have any combinations. What do you see here? You can have a multiple bodies. You can bring it inside and you can mesh it. Okay. So any combination of fluid or solid, one or more bodies or voids, you can bring it. But if you are having multi-body, either you need to connect. I told you, explain you, right? Share topology. Either you connect in your, into the CAD or you connect inside the fluent meshing itself, okay? You want to go through this a lot of text, rather go to the action and see it, right? Yeah. Okay. So all these are, um, I'm going to take you through the, the demo. Just one thing is want to say here is, space claim is not supported on Linux machine. Okay. So now the question is, how will you use fluent machine? Okay. So, so whenever you are importing the CAD form to any CAD file in Windows using the fluent machine, it creates one file automatically called .pmdb file. Automatically. So once you do the import, it will create in background .pmdb file, okay? 
Why? Because the space claim is not supported and the geometry import is through the background is a space claim. Mm -hmm. So if it is not supported in Linux, then uh, it will fail. So what you can do is in, in, in work, uh, sorry, in, in, in Windows, you can import, you can do the import in Fluent. And once it writes the .pmdb file, then you can take that .pmdb file to Fluent and import it the way you import any other file. Mm -hmm. Second advantage of using .pmdb, okay, before I come to that, .pmdb file also can be exported from space claim directly. So space claim, you are working on the geometry, instead of taking it to the fluent machine, you export it to the .pmdb file, okay? So that you can do. If I have a space claim open, you see here? So from here, I can take this geometry to watertight geometry workflow directly. I don't have to save or something. Um, yeah. Let me save the file at least. Okay. So you can choose the uh, uh, watertight geometry workflow from here. Or you can export the .pmdb file directly from the space claim. That means now you go to the Shaheen, okay, give that .pmdb file, and then you continue the work as you were doing. Okay, that's the only thing right now. Yes, if you are, let's say, opening or running Fluent on Linux machine, then this is the workflow you need to follow. Because space claim is not supported on Linux. If, uh, if, if space claim is not supported and you saw the first item in the fluent machine was import geometry, first line item, right? So when you are importing the geometry in background, it is invoking the space claim. So if I do the same thing in Linux, space claim is not there, then it will fail. So what I'm trying to tell you a workaround that you open the space claim on your Windows machine, right? And export the .pmdb file. And instead of importing the CAD format or anything, you import their .pmdb. So good question. No answer. If you have only Linux, right? Then fluent machine, you have to get a, a PMDB file. Otherwise, uh, there is no solution. How about the other software for Francis? Design. Hmm? Design frame, I believe. So I, I know there is another way to do the mesh in sorry, the geometry. Design, design modeler. Design model. Yes. Is there a design model inside Linux? Yes. Um, design modeler. Yes, there is a Linux. I don't I knew, but I came in, didn't come in my mind. So yeah. I stop design modeler. So design modeler is available in Linux. From design modeler, if, okay, I need to check that. If you can export to .pmdb again, fine. Your job is done. Yeah, thank you. So you are becoming expert, see? <laughs> yeah. So that's the only thing I wanted to tell you about the, and everything is given here uh, in the slides what you have. So instead of that, let's look at the, the, the demo directly, okay? okay. So to look at the demo, <clears throat> we will see how we start the Fluent Missing. I will answer all your questions. So let's say Fluent 2021 R2 I have, and you guys have R1. So you have Missing and Solution. So I think this I have explained, except some of the things here I want to explain. 
So you can set up the working directory. Working directory means if you save anything, it will go to this directory. Okay. So you can set up the working directory. Here, parallel missing processes. How many are there? Four, how many core we can use without use of HPC? Four, right? And there will be a question in the exam for sure. Four, four cores. Yeah, I'm, I'm disclosing the question paper also. Okay. So, so four core you can use without use of any HPC. Okay. So that's the way. Now, if you want to utilize those four more number of cores, let's say 100 cores, but in one machine, you will not have 100 cores, right? So you will use two machines, right? Multiple nodes. And then that is what we call it distributed memory, right? So distributed memory. So you can, in a, in, a, in a graphics panel also, you can go here into the parallel settings and you can specify, I want to run in a shared memory on a local machine or I want to say distributed memory. So if I say distributed memory, it asks me the machine name or file containing the machine. Okay. If you are running it through the GUI, but if you are running through the batch mode, then you have to give everything through the command line. Okay. And that on third day, we will take care of it. So you don't have to worry right now. Right. So let's select the shared memory and then say start. Perfect. So let me open a simple that let's look at the workflow. So now this is a fluent missing. So here, if you look at that, there are a lot of information given here. You see? There's a startup at the startup. What are the recent files? Uh, what are the tutorials? What's the new about the new release? All these information. But if you don't want this to happen every time, you can simply switch it off. Okay. So next time when you open, this will not come. Okay. Or you can close it from here. Now, same way here, if you look at let me bring some, uh, maybe a geometry. Can you also grab and drag here? No, it's not drag and drop here. So I'm going to. <clears throat> Don't worry about this. I'm just trying to. So I'll take this as a example and try to show you. You have seen this geometry, right? I'm taking the same one. So workflow, here you have a different type of workflow you can select. What we are focusing in this training, watertight geometry workflow, okay? That means your geometry should be watertight, okay? You cannot handle a very dirty cat, okay? If you want to have a dirty cat and um, then there is another type of workflow, which is called fault tolerant uh, yeah. meshing, okay? Which we are not covering. Here. But this is like, but if your geometry is clean fairly enough, then you can do it. Now, if you look at here, I can, I can have, I can save any workflow I have saved, okay? 
that I also can do. I can save this workflow also, and we will see that. Now, let's look at some of the, the option here. You see that sometimes it is annoying to me, this type of a grid, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want this. Sometimes this shadow is also, I don't like. So I can just switch it up. Okay, I don't like this grid also. Maybe I'm, some people like it, okay. So there are options you can utilize it. There is a ruler here. So you can, you know the, the at least through the ruler that was the size of your geometry. You know? So these are some of the utility features you can utilize. Um, and then you can display and all those things. Now, let me just show you the preferences, some of the things under the preference. So in preference, the appearance of this, there is a theme now called dark theme. Wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. which is I think nothing is visible yeah. or it's visible. No. No. Okay. So just, uh, huh? sorry, how? barely yeah, because of the screen. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. if you look at their their backside, <coughs> oh. right? So yeah. So you you some people may like it. Yep. That type of yeah, dark themes. So those themes are available for you. If you don't like, just keep it. You can change the background up to you. So let's go back to our old theme. Okay. You can change if you don't like white background. All those things can be changed through the where. Go to the preference. Okay. Now, do you see here? Um, some of these options, green check, green check with the as star mark. Green check means no errors done, okay? Green check with the star mark means it's done, but it's still there are some warnings, okay? You may want to remove those warnings, okay? If it is like this, that means it require your attention or input is required. Okay, it's not completed. But, and this is a console window. So you have a, these errors and the warnings will appear in the console window always, okay? But it's very difficult. So what you can do, you can do a right click and it's a context sensitive menu, okay? So you can do right click anytime and there will be many options. So I can say show error and warnings then it exactly shows what was the warning. Okay. Now let's say if I want any time I want to reset this workflow, I can do this, reset this workflow. So where it went, select the workflow type. Yeah, from the start, okay? Let's say if I have saved some workflow, I can open that workflow and it is saved as a WFT. So I say, okay. Import the geometry and there is a file here and as I import. So this workflow is already saved. What I can do is instead of going each and everything, I can simply click on the last one and say update. So it will ask me, you want to update all above? I say yes. Yes, is done. Okay. And you can check the the mess how it is. No boundary layer, nothing. Okay, just to now if I can 
I can now save it with some different name. Okay. And if I go and reset it, still that is available. I can go back and check that. It doesn't go away until unless I close it. So those are available at least for you. Okay. Let's try to look at the, let's read it, what it happens. So let's, this is what I saved. So it will open all of them. Any point, if you want to edit anything, you can edit, okay? And then you can update the rest of the things. So it's up to you. Any question? So yes, just very quickly, where do we start the workflow, uh, the new workflow? Just I uh, missed one point. Which icon start the workflow? Anyone? Um, can, can you repeat your question? Uh, 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 which which icon will start a new workflow to create a new, a new workflow? Ah, new workflow. Okay. So there is a there are options here. You can open a new workflow here. You can mm. save the existing workflow here. You can reset the workflow here. Okay. So once you say reset workflow, it will open just say from the start. And then so, it will keep all those which are into the current session, like two, two, two. This will be. So anytime I can check any of them, or I can have a I can select workflow. Now you can also design your workflow. Okay, let's do that. So instead of saying water type. I say create a new one. So do a right click. <coughs> and it will tell you only the option which are relevant. So it will not give you 100 options. What is the first option? Okay. Do again a right click. What is the next option? Add local site. Do again a right click. What is the next option? Create a surface mesh. Yeah. What is the next option? Apply shared topology or if you want to create a capping, you know, all those create a regions. So these tasks. So what I'm trying to say to you is that it will give you the options which are useful. It will not unnecessarily populate. So you can create your workflow and then you can save it, this one. And you say, this is my new workflow. So new workflow. That's it. And let's say if I go here, you can always uh, read that workflow. This is what we did. So you can automate the whole thing. You can script it, right? You can put into the script. I think for today it's enough. I can see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So let's take uh, five, 10 minutes. Any questions you guys may have? Anything? Yeah, sorry. Or, yes. Yeah, back to the time. How many of the this How can I check? So you want to know what is the the I look Okay. 
Otherwise, I will ask you a question and you go home with that question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then you apply the record technology. And then you put the record, and then some of the if it is not watertight, and you cannot, then the PM is the. Yes. When you start the project, you have to up the number of policies you want to use. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you start the the project, for example, the student, you say, okay, I want to use only four codes. Okay, but if if I want to change that value in the process, can I do that? Well, run. Yes. No, I need to close the open again. Yes. So you save the. Let's say you ran few. Maybe you ran for one day, right? You save the case file. You save the data file. Close the fluent. Open the fluent and specify during the run. You. Any other question? Was it useful? Yes. Sure. Sure. But, yeah. Yeah. Even even yeah, guys, online guys. Yeah, you can also because it was more. I gave you the background, and if you ask, it was not a traditional training way. The way the training happens, but I I was thinking that how I can make sure that you understand. And then learning will become very easy for you guys, you know. So at least I tried to do that, you know. I don't know. Yeah. Think you're successful. That means I think. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's that's fine. I think the last questions uh, make it more interactive. I think tomorrow I was slow today, and I. I think my colleague also took uh, some part of the tomorrow I'm going to do full and I will be a little bit faster to tomorrow because we are lagging behind. We have to cover the whole solver and we have to cover the cover the meshing also. So let's spend one hour, one and a half hour in meshing. If you try to do some tutorials and come up with some questions for me tomorrow, it would be great. Otherwise, yeah. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, guys. So tomorrow, see you at 9 a.m. PSA time. I hope it was useful for you. Tomorrow. Just one question about the code. Uh, you mentioned that the software.